Welcome everybody to Tabletop to Keyboard. I am Dustin and I've got myself, well most of my players are here. We have one that's going to be running a little late. We'll be taking a break here shortly to add her in when she gets here. But um, returning, if you recognize these players and the characters, that's because they were the cast from A Bitter Harvest, which we ran the last two sessions with this group. And they just completed it at the end of last game. It was a long game session, but we were so close to the end, I didn't want to have to start a third game session here because it had only been an hour worth of material at that point. But um, two of the characters, well, technically three, did escape a bitter harvest and those are the three we have here with us so we're gonna go ahead and do some really quick introductions of who their characters are and who they are starting over there at the far end of the overlay with malice malice hey i'm bingo i'm the short halfling watchman who keeps his eye open and is uh, a master at running away <laughs> Right, and sliding over on the on the uh, overlay is one of our players that we haven't got to see too much of. He's had an unfortunate couple of absences. Um, Georgie, it's good to have you back. Tell us who you are and uh, who you're playing. It saved your life. Hey, I'm Georgie. Um, I'm I'm really nobody. Um, I just hang out here sometimes and play games. Um, the player I have is Vladimir. He is a pamphleteer. He's working on a, a big juicy story about the events from last games. Um, so no big deal. Um, he uh, he has an interesting trait though that uh, makes him very either um, scary or very um, I guess the word we're looking for he can motivate people to do things while he's drunk, but that's the only time it works is when he's drunk. So it should be a lot of fun. That's right. And as we slide across the overlay, to snacks snacks tell us who you are and who you're playing. Hello, I am playing uh, Frederick Schorhammer, but you just call him Freddy for short. I'm six foot two, 253 pounds, a mountain amongst men. And my profession is a cheap jack. So I'm a bit of a businessman. Uh, I am a bit loyal to my party mates. However, I am no hero. So I'm about survival, uh, negotiations, bargaining. Those are my strengths. All right. And again, I am Dustin. I'll be the GM for this adventure. Um, we just finished Bitter Harvest, which is the adventure from the back of the Zweihander Revised Core Rulebook. Um, so that that game session, last game, ended spectacularly with Freddy and Bingo making a daring escape from the village of Vorberg as it burned. And as they escape out of the West Gate, they find hiding out alongside the road, Vladimir, who had been holed up inside the cowardly orcs working on his, what is sure to be Pulitzer Prize, you know, winning, uh, winning uh, story that the uh, the ogre was up there working on the whole time instead of adventuring with his, his party mates. Um, so he, he missed most of the action, but when things got when things got heated, when when the orcs war band showed up, it was it was uh, Bingo, Freddy, and Cork who who helped f try to fight off the the orcs, and then realized very quickly that they needed to very much flee <laughs> because it was it was not a fight they were going to win. They they found out all sorts of horrible things that the people of Vorberg had done. Um, for those of you who may be watching this later, I will not spoil any more than that. But um, they, 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 they learned the truth from some of the NPCs there near the very end and then realized there was nothing they were fighting for, so they fled. One character was not so lucky. Poor, poor Cork did not make it out. In a, in a heroic attempt to try to get Helena Steiger out of where she was, she was captured and brutally beaten to death. Uh, no, no, nothing more that could be done about it. Her her poor allies had to watch on in horror, as as the house and everything went went up, and and they had to they had to leave poor Cork behind. So the player of Cork, uh, the nerd, she will be with us shortly um, to introduce her new character, and we will get a chance to meet meet the new character down the road. So, without any further ado, the party having fled Vorberg, can no longer head back towards Swansea. It is very, very obvious from the events of A Bitter Harvest that that road is being watched. And after seeing the full number of the of the loads and loads of, of the war band that is present, they know that their only real, their only real um, 
chance at survival to get away from to get away from the events of Norberg is to head east. And with very little need of a map or any rural knowledge, you know that not far east of here is the Bosque River, which will take you take you downstream. And then the next nearest town is is a town called Minuet. But to get there, you'd have to you have to go to sort of a little outpost along the river so you can catch yourself a barge. And by catching yourself a barge, you make your way down the river to the village of Minuet. And there you will find at least some level of sanctuary from what might be raving bands of, of orcs you'd have to deal with for quite some time afterwards. So skipping a bit ahead, you make your way through the forest all the way to Lloyd's Beacon. And, and Tom is muted. Try, try it again, Tom. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Because uh, I didn't want to interrupt your uh, speech. Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I said, uh, really, we, we passed through a town of people that runs slower than us so that we could uh, <laughs> slow down the war band. Well, that's, that's most certainly Lloyd's Beacon. All, all 12, <laughs> population 12 at the outpost. Oof. So you, you come to this tiny little, this tiny little, uh, like I said, just a, oh, hold on. We have our other player joining us. She's here earlier than I thought she'd be, so I'm going to switch back real quick to the intro screen so I can get the overlays recut real quick, and we will be right back with our other player.
was fine. We should be back live, and I am here now with all of my players. Oops, hold on. Let's get this out of the way slightly. Make it get smaller again. There we go. Now everything's set back up where I need it. Okay, so, um, as we were saying, the party had just come out of, out of Vorburg after seeing the horrific events of, of a bitter harvest, and unfortunately down down a person for so they lost they lost poor cork who was brutally beaten by by orcs who attempt oh georgie thank you for all those gift subs um we uh they it was it was the town of vorberg was sacked they're out on the road heading to a place called lloyd's beacon when at first they come across their friend vladimir the the frail ogre pamphleteer who'd been working on his manuscripts for his for his juicy story that he's going to publish and and then as they go down the road a little further they realize they're being followed and they turn to find their small friend cork scraggling up the road behind them Cork? Is this a ghost haunting me? Wait yes. a minute. I'm haunting you. As Cork approaches. Cork, Cork you made it? This is your yes. this is on your second day of travel out. It's a big full moon. You see you see Cork comes up the road and as as Cork approaches, when when she gets close enough under the, the light of a full moon. You can tell there's there's something different about Cork. Um, can we do a perception check? Scrutinize. Scrutinize. Okay. Yeah, I think it's definitely time for a good scrutinize. I'm going to scrutinize this. Okay, at standard, those of you who pass your scrutinize check. Notice that Cork has a rather a pale sort of green hue to her skin and two pointy teeth jut out from her bottom lip up over her top lip. Her ears are still ever just as pointy as they always were. Her hair, a darker shade of what it used to be, still curls up on top. Her eyes look maybe ever so more sunken in than they were before. Want my spear and I point it quick. Hey man, what are you doing? Uh you're a mutant. What do you mean? Cork, I feel fine. You remember getting beaten? The last thing you saw was a was an orc standing over you who who who, who clubbed you viciously. The next day you awoke in in the rubble of of everything that was inside the house and and proceeded down the road where you where you saw the trail of smoke from a small campfire as they were camping overnight and you, you hustled through the night to catch up to them you haven't seen yourself at all you have no idea yeah no i feel fine like i don't know what you're talking about run your tongue over your teeth what do you mean? I've always had an overbite. You never had fangs. How do you know what gnomes have and don't have? I know you didn't have fangs before. Maybe I was a vampire before. <laughs> That's not how that works. It's the other way around. And we don't want you to be a vampire either. Why not? Cork, what happened to what happened to Helena? I have no idea. The last thing I remember was being beaten with a club. I 
and then well it's good it's good to see that you made it out of you know we we were we were at a very narrow miss there frankly i didn't think we were going to make it out alive so uh thank goodness for those um mushrooms that uh bingo had on him yeah Mush- mushrooms what mushrooms the orcs like this uh, type of mushroom that puts you in your rage. And uh, they were willing to trade them for our lives. And was Cork the only one to consume these mushrooms? No. No, no. Cork, Cork unfortunately, uh, we were split up at one point, and uh, Bingo and I had to fight our way out of the temple, um, narrowly escaped by jumping off ran through the streets and hid. Uh, when we were discovered, uh, Bingo was able to negotiate for our quick passage out uh, with with those mushrooms. So, But I'm amazed we've made it through through the woods as we have. Of course, obviously, going in opposite direction from where they expect us to go. Interesting. Yes. But it's good that we're all back together. Although, Cork, you look like you need a little something to uh, something to eat there looking a little pale oh yeah i'm definitely hungry like i could use some food you, you continue to go ahead i'm, I'm like looking around at the party going like we're all cool with this? <laughs> for those of you who have a dot you can make a folklore check at routine Make sure I have that routine. Oh, routine. That would be me. So Freddie's going to think about some of the things that he's heard. All right. If you make it, and it looks like um, Freddie is aware, and it looks like so is Vladimir, um, you are well known that it's a as much as mutants are somewhat often believed to be a myth in of their in of itself, it is believed as part of that myth that if you are slain by an orx, that they carry on them weapons that are coated with the disease that causes it to begin with, and you can contract it merely by being slain by one. And the next night of a full moon, after you are per- after you perish at the hands of one, you can raise as one. So there are religious ceremonies that could be taken place by the martyr and the steward and these and the custodian that have to be performed over someone who's slain by an orcs to prevent them from coming back. And because this event happened on the night of a full moon, the very next mm-hmm. night that Corks was after she was slain, she rose as a low orcs. All right. Now this is the closest uh, you've gotten to one minus the fighting them last game. So <laughs> you've never seen one not angry and trying to kill you, but there she is. <laughs> oh, uh, well, Freddie's not so sure that she wouldn't have reason to try to kill him anyway. Uh, just just means that he's going to be more conscientious of sleeping with one eye open uh, for you know several reasons around around court. Yeah, and Bingo too. Just saying. What I do? Well, then we should get down the road and feed our companion. Yes, let's. let's. So you you camp like it said a couple days travel to get to to the little port of uh, Lloyd's Beacon, a little outpost, which is just a small place where where ships come and refuel and re resupply all that sort of stuff as they as they frequently will stop there before making the the rather treacherous trip down the Bosco River to Minuet, which is the nearest actual town. So you you're you're kind of coming in from a place where there's not even really a road. You're just kind of having to take woodland paths again cutting through the forest and around around the um the Horn Monk from which um, you guys are very familiar with now and, and you make your way past those and you know that once you get past that point and towards the Basque River that, that things begin a little more jaggedy, a little more rocky, hilly um, as, as the river cuts a gorge through through that area so this, this little place of Lloyd's Beacon this tiny little outpost is, is, the, is the last place before you hit 
really, really rough waters as it, as it takes you down to Minuet on the other side. And you eventually come up over a hill and you look down into kind of the valley of the river and you can see the little, the few stone huts and the four or five wooden docks that kind of jut out into the river in, in this little cove, if you will, that is Lloyd's Beacon and a few lanterns that are swinging and kind of hanging down there that emit a little bit of light. You can see there's a few barges pulled up and and uh, there's not there's no inns or taverns here as, as the, the people on the barges have to, to literally sleep on their boats. But there is a few warehouses and stuff where, where things are stored where they can go and pick up more supplies. And that's literally all that is here. There isn't much. And a, and a little guard shack. So it's literally more of a way station than yes. even a town? Yeah. It's the equivalent of pulling off the interstate to a pilot station. <laughs> really not, oh my God. <laughs> like you're not like, yeah, right. it's, it's not like you're going into like even a town a with a gas station. station in the the exit. It's like literally just the little, the little travel, you know, place is essentially, yes, what it, what it is for, for a grim and perilous world, I suppose. <laughs> So you, you make your way down in, and uh, you can tell without too much trouble because you're all kind of seasoned adventurers and you live in this world regularly that you can tell from the overcast skies as that, as that full moon the next night starts to become, the, the light gets more dim as clouds move in and you can tell there's definitely a storm coming. So you're you're looking for opportunity at this point to to find yourself a boat that'll take you down river before you're stuck here in the storm and when you get down you do find a man who has who has a barge that's pulled up there and and uh he has a sign out front that says you know crew needed well not sure how it Good at being being crew on this boat, but well, barge. Freddie, Freddie being the, I will say, Freddie being the mountain amongst men, uh, he has a bit of a brawn, uh, has no problem going up and, and saying, "Uh, we see you need crew, but we also need passage down the road. Uh, what's the pay like for your barge?" Yeah, this old raggedy man comes out there. Well, it's a, it'll be. Four brass pennies a day. It's only a day's travel down to the next stop, but we're gonna need to make it there before this storm hits. So there's no way we'll make it through the jagged rocks. Four brass pennies each. Wanna well, get... we got. What about how? How think you can make that? Uh, maybe make that six. Uh, we've been uh, on the road a bit, and uh, but we're well rested and. Got a strong crew here. Can you make it six brass pennies a day? Careful. Look at how big these two are. <laughs> make a make a routine bargain check. Anna, give me some whiskey. I got this. Freddie's like, no problem. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me let me see if There's he can no bargain a better bowl. Oh man. He looks at you and he says, "Listen, I got the only barge that's gonna be leaving port today." Unless you want to be stuck here for a few days without the cold and the weather. Four brass pennies a day. Otherwise, you'll be paying one of these other skiffs to get onto their barge. I'm the only one here needing crew. Mine deserted on me. Well, all the more reason to maybe uh, pay us five pennies a person. All right. Fine. Five it is. Five each. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, get here on board. We'll be leaving first thing in the morning. So you guys make your way onto the barge, and it's a it is a rather flat. Looks like a like a shipping barge. It's got some crates on it. Um, he's clearly carrying goods. You see that there's bunks set up that have been used the previous couple of nights. It looks like. Um, you're, you're unsure where the rest of his crew might have gone to, but you do see that there's, there are a few bunks set up and he, he gives you a quick brief tour of the barge and 
he walks down the end. He goes, in the morning, I'll need to be stationed here looking for jagged rocks. You use these poles here as, as, we're, as we're going down. And if you have to, you use those big oars there and you just, you just push off the rocks so we don't hit them. Help guide around. I'll be at the rudder in the back. But I'm going to need you to be my eyes up front. So uh, you should think about getting yourself some rest. And he goes, right. you see, he's got like a, like a fishnet hammock up there at the back where he, where his captain's wheel is. And he's, he hoists himself up into there and he, you hear him start sawing logs real heavy. Like, uh, sounds like like that. No wonder his crew left. <laughs> I am going to, uh, quickly set myself up and pass the hell out. I am uh, also going to make sure all my equipment is very secure and like underhand while I'm sleeping. No problem. Um, again, make sure on your character sheets that your peril is returned all the way back to unhindered. And yeah, I was just doing that. <laughs> for damage track purposes, none of you should have any damage on you at this point. You've had a couple of days to bandage up with your supplies. You'll all be fine. Corks gets magically resurrected via Orcs Molt and is thus unharmed as well. So you guys get about an hour's worth of sleep before you hear a commotion that wakes all of you. You hear, you hear, he went this way. No, he, he went over there. And you, guy brings you out of your sleep. And you, you get up and you, you head over to the edge of the barge. And as you make your way to your gangplank that takes you over to the dock from your ship down to the dock, you see a man comes running up the gangplank and pushes past you. He's in a dark leather jerkin and a hood. He says, quickly, you must hide me. They're coming. They'll find me. Who's coming? You look, Why must we? You look down the pier and you see a, a set of four or five reeves they got lanterns swinging they got pikes and they're kind of pointing around ah he went that way quickly i'll explain once they're gone and he tries to make his way back to hide behind some some crates can i grab onto his leg yeah <laughs> you can try to grab him that would be What kind of skill check would that be? I'm sorry, that's a um, simple, simple melee. Or a simple, uh, yeah, simple melee is unarmed strikes and grabs. Okay, you successfully that's... grab hold of him. You're not doing a choke hold or anything, so you're just... No, I'm just holding Yeah, you just grab hold of him. So he's he's kind of pulling against you. He's like, quickly, I don't have time. As you, as he kind of pulls his, his uh, kind of part of his cloak away from you, you notice that there's blood on your hands from where you had grabbed his cloak. Ew! I am going to uh, stroll down the uh, gangplank, kind of like rubbing my eyes, like, "What's the commotion out here? What can we do for you?" Can we also figure out if it's his blood, if it's somebody, if it's not you, regime you, from you, him? You can't tell at this point. Um, if you would like to make a heal check, you can try to assess him, but you'll have to get him somewhere you can really look him over first. Um, in the meantime, like I said, he's going to go duck behind some crates and try to attempt to hide. And uh, this here is the guy that you're you're seeing at the moment. I, if you're looking at your roll 20 screen, I just moved him up there by yep. tokens. Pretty soon, as he's as he's as he's attempting to hide, you you do see the the group of Reeves comes over and they're they're up at the the boat at the next dock over and you see they're they got their lanterns kind of swinging around and you you can see the light flickering as it as they're moving around on that boat and you can see they're kind of they're kind of searching it and they're talking to a couple guys in the crew and you hear the guy yelling it's like there ain't nobody on my boat there ain't no stowaways here you got the wrong boat get off my boat and there you hear him said oh I'm quiet down man we'll be done in a second. Ain't nobody getting out of this port till we clear them. And then pretty soon you see they they make their way down towards your guys' gangplank. And you, you're the old man. Can, the owner and I'm down at the... Oh, he still saw he logs, still right? He still saw logs. So he, I'm at the... 
so I'm going to be at the bottom of the ramp, like, because I'm, like, wandering down, like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> like, what's the, what's the issue? Pretty soon you see some, you see, uh, like I said, the group makes their way over towards you. A couple of them have poles with lanterns. A couple of them have large two-handed pikes out. And one of them is a flintlock pistol tucked in his belt, kind of a little bit of a beer belly and a big handlebar like mustache. He comes walking He's up there to the front. Sheriff <laughs> says, uh, "Well, um, my name here is uh, Sergeant uh, Winterhalder. Uh, How local, you doing, local Reeves, eighteen forty-four. Um, there's been a uh, there's been a robbery, <laughs> and uh, suspect fled this direction." So Ooh, what was stolen? Uh, stole a coin purse. Yep, the coin oh, purse. Is anybody hurt? No, nope. Just just stuff. Uh, just stuff taken. They said they got a good shot at him, but uh, took took a took a good arrow shot at him, I guess. But um, so far we haven't found him. Ooh, see. Well, um. We haven't seen anything unusual around here, so uh, if there's anything we can do to help you out, it will uh, give a shout out if uh, we see anybody around here. What does he look like? Or she, for that matter, I guess. Uh, dark jerkin, had a hood. We didn't get a real good look at him, but um, appeared to be a uh, young man. How much was in this coin purse you said they stole? Uh, well, you know, driver down the way said, uh, said there was a few, uh, extra silver shillings that he was going to use to purchase supplies when he reached Minuet. So, uh, if you don't mind, we'll just be, uh, we'll just be a moment and, uh, taking a look at, uh, just be taking a look at their, uh, on your boat. So he kind of goes to push past you. Well, I, I like... It's not my boat. Let me get the captain. Make sure you have permission to come on the boat. We are back. And I, I motion to I walk halfway up the gangplank, and I motion to uh, Vlad to uh, uh, go get the uh, captain. And I'm still holding on to this guy's leg, right? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. You're he. He's kind of dra- He kind of drug you back over there. So I mean, if you follow him, you're gonna stand right there next to him. Yeah, you can do that. But. Mm-hmm. He's he's lean he's there he's huddled up and you see he's kind of clenching at his side, and as you stand there and watch more you can see the blood pouring out over his fingers. He's like kind of motion at you, go away. You uh, are you, you're gonna stop Sergeant Winterhalter from getting on the boat? Yeah, and it, it just to, just until we get get the captain, you get the captain's permission. You do whatever you need to do. I just you know. I, I just got hired on, so I want to make sure we just follow the captain's rules. It'll just take a moment. All right, he says as he stands there and kind of starts tapping his boot. You see the the reeves start to go down the dock, and they're holding up the lantern up along the edge mm-hmm. of the boat. They're kind of waving it around. And uh, is Vladimir going to get the? Captain, I don't know. What's Georgie, that? sure, why not? <laughs> you go up there and you you shake the net hammock, and he kind of tosses and turns a bit. What is it? What is it? What is it? Sir, sir, there's there's race here, and, and they want to search the boat. Well, uh, well, what do I pay you for? Go we'll take care of it. I need my rest. He kind of rolls back over. So uh, I, I want to go back um, down to where the, the race are at, and, and I want to try and convince them that this person isn't on our boat, um, as we were just all there and awake and um, came down to meet them in the first place. Because that's what I do. <laughs> all right, so you go, you, you, you make your way home back down there without the captain. And Sergeant Winterhalder looks up. Well, all right. You got Captain's Blessing? Can we come aboard? It'll only be a minute. 
Oh, sir, there's there's no bee on our bow. You don't need to come aboard. Uh, like I said, we all came and we would have seen him if, if we would have uh, passed him on the way. So there's there's no bee on the board. Well, um, you know, port port protocol is is we we ha we have to come on and check at this point. I mean, we know he came this way. You're the last you're the last boat on the you're at the last uh, dock. I mean, there's nowhere else he could have gone. Maybe he went for a midnight swim. Maybe you miss him somewhere else. All right, guys, go ahead. Get on the boat. You see they... I just kind of move out of the way. Like, they just kind of make their way past you. He kind of just nudges you know, past you and gets up there and he puts his hands on his belt and just kind of starts to walk around. You see the, the reeves are, are slowly making their way around there. They're kind of bumping boxes with their with their pikes. Kind of poking around. Are you still over there with him, Cork? Yeah. Since you're the one who's who's the most dedicated to it at this point, are you going to give him away? Or are you going no. to hide him? I'm going to hide him. Okay. So then I need you to make a skullduggery check or stealth, whichever one's better for you. Just keep it at standard, because I'm going to be rolling against you. So there's no need to adjust the... Ooh, that's not a very good roll. Oh, that's a worse roll. Okay, so... <laughs> you don't particularly do a great job of hiding. Everyone else in your guys' little crew here can clearly see the guy hiding behind the crate. And Cork, little Cork, just standing there in front... Like, right in front of him, you can clearly see him. You can see the trail of blood starting to run across the deck of the ship. And these and reeves just are just, they're just busy opening up crates, looking inside, everything else. They don't they don't find this guy at all with their with their critical fail. Oh, thank you for the follow there. Yeah. They're like, and, are you in this jar? <laughs> and at this, at, at this point, Freddy's going to step up and try to create, uh, maybe just kind of, redirect them, uh, and maybe intimidate to get okay. these guys off. Say, say, hey, um, you know, I realize you've got business to do, but, you know, we're trying to sleep. We, you know, we, we got to get out before that storm. So you can obviously see nothing's here. Do you, you think you can go about your business elsewhere now? Right. So I like to roll an intimidate check. That's fine. Routine? Uh, keep it standard for right now. Okay. Oh, that's a really good roll. So they kind of look it over. They said, hey, he's not on this boat. He, he's got to be back over there somewhere. He couldn't have gone far. And they, they start to make their way back off of there. And you see Sergeant Winterhouder kind of turns and looks over at Bingo and says, now, uh, you know, if uh, for any reason he happens to turn up by port authority, you are... Uh, you're obligated to have to turn him oh, over. Oh, we'll give him a holler. I don't have no interest in protecting the thief. All right. He kind of gives you the side eye look as he as he turns around and heads back down the game plank and and back down towards the guard shack. Stroll back up the game plank. You stroll on back up. Captain still sawing logs up there. We go back to sawing logs. We're so, actually, we, we still got a problem. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> I'll wait for the Reeves to make sure that they're gone, and then uh, we'll uh, deal with the problem. The, the man leaning up there, he's kind of crouched up there between a couple of crates. He kind of scoots over a little past Cork, and he lays himself out there as he's he's clutching his side. Is he wearing shoelaces? What? Is he wearing shoelaces? Uh, his boots probably have a very short amount of lace on them. Yeah, if you were gonna. Can I tie? Can I tie them together? If you want to. <laughs> Don't make any checks for that or not. Nah. Um, I mean, I'll <laughs> let you do it. He's not resisting, so you can. <laughs> he, he he's laying there bleeding out at the moment, so he uh he lays there. He's like, oh. Oh, thank you. 
Uh, I'm afraid it's gonna be all for naught, though. Oh, it's awfully deep. And you see, he has this large wound that that's punctured through his leather jerkin, and it most certainly does not look like it was made by an arrow. Can I try and stop the bleeding? If you want to make a heal check, do you have the heal skill? Let me see. It is a hard heal check to attempt to try to save him at this point. And it's flipped to fail, if you don't have it. Yeah, it's flipped to fail. I.e., you have a much higher chance of killing him than uh, actually helping him. I mean, really, either way, win-win, because we get coins. Yeah. It is a flip to fail, so... Okay. Yeah, go ahead and uh, make a heal check, flip to fail. And you did, but you failed, because you flip, and that didn't pass either direction, so... Um, <laughs> I'm not going to ban anybody, Nikki, you're fine. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you try to get him, you, you get the jerkin peeled up off of him, you take a look at the wound. It takes roughly ten minutes to make a heal check in Zweihander, so you're, you're busy looking at it, trying to, to wrap it up. And during this time, you notice that he's already gone pale and has quit quit talking. He's 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 already bled out. There's there's nothing else you can do to save him at this point. Search him for loot. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to do. Was when I was you search him for him. loot, you do not find coin, save for a few brass pennies that he has in his in in his pocket. You I'm don't taking find, those. You don't find any excess bag with silver shillings in it. You do, however, find a small note. Note. Is it readable? It is readable. Let me see if I can find exactly what it says. I'm pretty sure I know what it says. I just have to find it. Expecting Witchstone to arrive in Minuet on the 13th aboard the Twin Trout. U G, and those are initials. U G. Definitely pocketing, like, pocketing that. Is there anything else? That's all you find on him. Okay, taking that and the pennies. All right, so you go ahead and you. I wave over uh, Vladimir and Freddy. We need. Don't be over the edge. Gross. Um, what? It's a dead body at this point. Yeah. That's not yeah, my don't want to get caught, but We don't want to be caught with it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's let's get him over. Like Pingo yep. said. Yeah, Freddy can do it. He'll, he can because Freddy Freddy can fix him up in one arm, you know, with one arm, and just takes him and just kind of. Slides him down over this off the side. Okay. I need you were a keeper. <laughs> so you, you guys get <laughs> up then, to the front of the barge and you just casually flop him over the edge into the water. <laughs> like, like, like a sack of potatoes. You're, you're far more <laughs> humane than my Gen Con group I ran this. They spent an hour slowly quartering and, and chumming him <laughs> into the water when they, when they take care of him in that game. So you're, you're far more humane than the last group. You're already off to a good start. So you guys, get him, you, guys, you guys get him and you, you flip him over the edge and you, you kind of watch it the, in the darkness as his, his lifeless body goes down the current towards where you know there's some very rapid rocks. And, and jagged rocks and everything else ahead, because that's what you're you're being employed to do is to help help navigate the barge down the down the rocky can, the rocks the, the rocky uh, path ahead. Of the evidence. Yeah. Can can I smear some blood on my face just to make it look like I was the one with all the blood? Sure. You you take you have it on your hand, so maybe instinctively in your new orc form, you're like right across your Ooh. face, and you got. Yeah. <laughs> You got a bloody hand, your own bloody handprint now across your face, like almost like war paint. How very Definitely orky not. of you! <laughs> yeah, yeah, not coming off. It's staying on. <laughs> We're still gonna die in the next town. I <laughs> see. <laughs> 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 uh. So you, you guys will go ahead and. Uh, 
try to get some rest for the for the night. The rest of the night goes relatively uneventful, other than the the aforementioned storm does start to move in. Oh, is there a, a mop or anything on this deck? Yeah, you find them. You find them. Yeah, I might mop. try to like slop up the mo- majority of the blood too, make it go away. With, with the light rain starting to come in, it's not it's not that hard at this point to to get it to get it to run off. Good deal. You just swap it on the deck a bit, and Captain's still up there just sawing logs. And well, that was a fun night. All right, let's get some sleep. All right. Again, if you haven't restored yourself, you're back to completely unharmed and unhindered on your peril and damage tracks. As you wake up the next morning, feeling very revived after the first good night's sleep you've had in a while after being on the run and sleeping kind of with one eye open because you're now in the company of an orc. Um, you Luckily, I always sleep with one eye open. Yeah, you do already. <laughs> yeah, you have this like, the light sleeper merit. So yeah, yep. <laughs> you always sleep with one eye open. Um, you guys wake up the next day and you find that the captain is not in his hammock. He is, who knows where he's at, but he's not on the barge at the moment. And, uh, as you're getting your stuff all set up and ready, you see him coming walking back from the from the supply shack with a couple bags. He walks up there and he, he hoists them up there on the boat. Put these over there in that crate. We'll be uh, ready to shove off here soon. Grab one. <laughs> yeah, good, good. I like I like a crew of good strong backs. You're gonna need it. This is gonna be a bumpy ride today. Now, which two many- of you's uh, got the best eyes? Because we're gonna need you up at the front. <laughs> sure. I'll call out the rocks. <laughs> All right, good. So you two get up there with those two long sticks. The other two of you, one of you man each side, over here along the sides, and just uh, if we need to, just give us a good push away from the edge. Like I said, I'll be be here on the back rudder. Any of you ever uh, sailed before? I'll take it by the blank stairs. That's a no. All right, so um, there's two kinds of rocks you have to watch out for here on this stretch. The first ones are the ones you can see. Those are the easy ones to miss because they jut up out of the water. There's a second kind that hang just below the surface of the water. And those are the real dangerous ones because you won't hardly see them until we're up on them. So you're going to need to feel around with them sticks a bit. And make sure you uh, make sure you find any of them that are jutting out. We don't want to run a, we don't want to run up ashore, you know. We don't want to run aground to put any holes in the bottom of the barge or it'll be a cold swim for all of us. I checked in with the uh, with the sergeant. He says we're clear to go. Lovely fella. So really he, do you need to get one of those firearms from these guys? <laughs> he uh, says, "Now you two over here on the sides with the side uh, poles, uh, give us a good push off there from the from the dock." He starts starts a uh, cranking on the rudder and. You guys give a good push off with the with the big long sticks like like ore things that he's got for you and you get you get yourself shoved off and you don't have to get out there too far before the current really starts to make the boat the barge start to pick up some speed. And it, it starts heading down heading down through the through as as you move along the what is kind of a kind of a flat beach like area right now uh, very quickly becomes kind of jutting rocks on the sides kind of rocky cliffs there's really nowhere nowhere to put the barge up onto up onto shore at this point as you go through this sort of highlands area where 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 this basque river kind of cuts through and as you start to move along you start to see some of those rocks he's talking about as they they kind of jut up along the sides and the first couple are are pretty easy to avoid they start, you, you get the big poles out there and you, you hit onto them and kind of give it a, 
a good shove and it helps kind of keep the keep the barge moving. Um, the barge doesn't move terribly fast. It is, after all, kind of a flat barge. It's not built for any kind of speed. It also doesn't cut terribly deep into the river, so you do you do have that luxury of of like I said, kind of being one of the few vessels that can make it in this inclement weather as the as the the rain is coming down quite good. Thanks to kind of the high walls along the edge of the river, you're not getting beat with the wind quite as bad as you would be if you were out in the open right now. But it is causing a fair amount of uh, a fair amount of current and a fair amount of uh, a, a, a bit of rain, everything else coming in. You're not really dressed for the occasion. Um, none of you are wearing rain slickers or anything else. So I'm going to need a challenging toughness test from everybody on the crew. Oh, oh, it's a critical fail from the ogre. Let's see. We got a bingo failed. Uh, the cork is okay. Snacks, did you roll? Oh, yep, you did. And you're okay. All right. So, um, so for bingo, you're going to take six physical peril. And for Vladimir, 13 physical peril. As you so are cold. Physical peril? Yeah, it's all perils all the same track. There's two kinds of peril. There's mental peril and there's physical peril. Sometimes okay. certain professions have a bonus versus one or the other. So they, they, they're only designated different um, so that you know if any of your talents affect it. If you had um, like strong jaw, strong jaw would take you would take one less level of peril from physical peril. Got it. Or long winded, if you're you're good at physical peril, whereas something like indifference protects you from like mental peril. So it's no, it, it has to beat your. It has to beat uh, the threshold to do a level to you. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't beat my threshold. It's at seven. Correct. Okay. One. Yeah. Okay. So you making your way down the river and already it's starting to set in. It's cold. It is, you're, you're getting a little wind blowing on you from, from it channeling down through this kind of a valley that you're in. And the rain's coming down pretty good. And you're really wishing now maybe you'd taken a little time to pick up some, some rain slacks, some ponchos or something to put on maybe on your way down. But being short on money and running for your lives, you didn't have time for such luxuries. So... Uh, the old man's got his on, and you see that he's he's weathered, and you can tell he's done this a lot. It does not seem to be phasing him at all. Um, you make your way down, and more rocks are... Oh, Blazecraft, Raiden. Thank you, Blazecraft, for the raid. We had... If you're just joining us, this is something about Marie. This is the adventure from the main Gauche supplement book for Zweihander RPG. And... It contains a lot of mature adult content. So, Blazecraft, I know your mom and dad are not going to want you to see what happens in the next scene, so you need to get out of here, buddy. But I love you for the rain. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I have to be that guy, right? i got to protect my, my friends and their kids. It's, I know who they are. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are making your way down this river, and it's just a long, bumpy ride. I'm going to have the, the two of you up front make um, awareness checks. And these are going to be at easy. Yeah, spicy content ahead. All right, so as you're making your way down this river, um, there's one of those hidden kind of rocks over on Vladimir's side, and he gets the pole out there, and he kind of, boom, puts a good hit on it, and it kind of, kind of jets the, the front of the boat around a little, the barge, and you, you kind of make it around it with, with minimal bumpage, and then that sends us right in towards another one, and, and Bingo tries to, tries to stick that pole to it to, 
but he but he misses and the front of the barge just slams into the front of one of those rocks and everybody's gonna have to make a standard coordination check but i made my roll so uh, both of ours are actually oh, uh, oh sure rating is 82 oh. yeah yeah and, and mine's actually fast too because i didn't change the difficulty yeah it's it's what i do it's like awareness I, is like my thing i totally looked at him backwards <laughs> but you're right with the extra 20 you would have passed also so yeah his 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 lines up right up to yours and you hit yours just fine i'm bad you hit yours just fine and you get it steered back around the other one nobody has to make any coordination checks nobody's gonna fall in the river today um so sorry you, you just Take you make it. your way through um you guys you guys make your way down and and as the day goes on the, the rain just starts coming in harder and harder and harder and and by afternoon it's time for everybody to have to make a hard toughness check. Womp womp. <laughs> hard toughness check for us yeah. all, correct? Okay. Oh, hard toughness check. So, so is that a pass? I hadn't looked at the results yet. Ooh. Um. Yes, yeah. You hit your mark exactly. You you have you've succeeded. Uh, if I you, had a nineteen and I succeeded. Yeah. Uh, if you succeed, obviously you take no peril. If you did not, if oh, let's see, did the two of you who failed this time are the ones who passed earlier, aren't you? Yeah. So it's just going to be one d ten plus one for each of you. So that's going to be seven incoming peril. And if our W, if so, if uh, we're at seven, it. it has to beat it. It has to beat it. Yep. Ties okay, go to the so, defender, and you're the defender in those situations. So. Okay, great. It ties with mine, so I'm good. Right. I have seven. So yeah, you. It ties with mine. Yep. Uh, if you if you pass, then you don't you don't take any peril. You're all soaked and cold, and you at this point cannot wait to get to Minuet. You finally come out of of the part of the river where the, the walls are, are kind of canyon-like. And you get back to where there's it's kind of flat again. And at this point, those howling winds really kind of start to drive in. And now you're really starting to feel cold. And But you're doing a good job of shrugging it off. You, you've all made your, your checks. None of you are going to suffer from any hypothermia or, or anything of that sort at this point. But um, you do take a little bit of ribbing from the captain obviously as he notes that none of you have your sea legs and that you're all land lovers and clearly not cut out for boat in life but uh you know if you're you're lucky if you had to run run his boat into any of them rocks he'd have taken it out of your pay and but uh you do make it to minuet and when you get to minuet it's really coming down at this point and you see there's there's a dock area there that you can pull the barge on up to and um there's, and you see a, a guy standing out there and he's got a lantern. He's he's not in as, as nice a... Uh, he doesn't have armor on like the Reeves you saw back at the port. But he's he's standing out there and he's got a slick poncho on, very similar to what your, your boat captain's wearing. And as as they get ready to pull in there, you hear him say, he goes, hey, he goes, uh, go ahead and dock. You can worry about the tolls in the morning. Just Just get inside. Go down there, this way. To what I, Jacobs? Down that way. He goes, I'll catch you in the morning for the toll. And he turns around and heads back into a tiny little, like, uh, stone, like, guard shack that's attached to a, kind of, a, almost like a lighthouse kind of fixture. It's not very tall. It ain't big enough to be, like, a true lighthouse, but it does have a, a little lantern up on top that helps you. Nice, identify. Georgie. Oh, nice, Georgie. <laughs> Yes, Georgie, with the weather effects going on. Exactly right. <laughs> Weatherman Georgie. <laughs> you you can see this little town of of wood wood buildings and and everything is just kind of huddled here along the side, and there's kind of dense dense forest out there behind it. You see the little town of Minuet. Um, it's got kind of a kind of a wooden uh, fencing around it, very similar to Vorburg. Not not terribly different than the kind of palisades you saw there, but um, 
otherwise it's it's just from from the riverside it's pretty open um you can you can see up into the you can see up into the town no problem uh some rows of of wood buildings a uh, few things that look like they might be stores storefronts and a, a kind of a larger building down the way that you can see has a plume of smoke coming out of the top of it Well, I'll pack up my stuff. I'll walk up to the captain and be like, pay up. And then uh, head to the... Captain uh, comes down and gives you all your five brass pennies. Hey, tell me dinner for tonight. <laughs> now, don't go spending it all in one place here. And there's only one place to spend it. <laughs> he grabs his and he... Starts to head on up the path. Yep, assumably where the smoke is coming out of the chimney. Yeah. You make your way up into the village of Minuet, and it's it's um, not cobblestone roads. The roads would be mud if it weren't. It's almost like when you walk through a, a, a national park or some sort of preserve where a lot of times you're walking on stone where things have been just cut out of the stone, and other times they've had to, they've had to put down logs and another cut wood to make sort of steps here and there for you to get up, get up through the town. Cause it, it's kind of sloped land. It's not terribly flat here still, but right. um, as, as you're walking up there, you're, you're basically walking on fallen trees that have over time just been impacted with mud to the point that it's, they're kind of roadways, if you will, that like you can take a cart down them. They're not that, it's not like San Francisco steep or something, right? Where it's, right. <laughs> it, but it's, it is, um, they, they would not be, they would not be a comfortable ride if you were on a wagon, for sure. It'd be very bumpy as you're making your way up. And at this point, there's been enough rain that there's the water's just running over these logs, headed down towards the down towards the river, and small streams along the side where things are dug out a bit more, almost like guttering. Just streams of water flowing past you as the as the winds are beaten down, and you you finally make your way up to this building. The large wooden building there. It's two story. It's got a, it's got a nice wooden roof and a, and a stone chimney you can see and, and it's got a, a sign that hangs in the front that has a, has a one eyed jack on it, almost like a playing card. And you see it's swinging in the winds right now, just batting back and forth. And there's a, a thin wiry looking man with a five o'clock shadow leaning against the door. Can I draw a mustache on the sign? You what? It's it's too Just, high. You can't reach it. You're you're a gnome. You're still gnome size. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that was a very gnomist statement there. If, if, if you could get Vladimir's gnomes? help or <laughs> or Freddy, because Freddy has mountain among men, or Vladimir who has an ogre, even a frail ogre, still stands almost eight feet tall. He could hoist you up there if he was so inclined, but you would have to have to talk to your ogre about standing out in the rain long enough for you to do this. Would you do this for me? If, if you do it quickly, just just quickly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he hoists you up there to the wood sign. It's it's carved out of out of a piece of wood, and you take a piece of charcoal and you just etch a sketch a mustache onto the onto the side of the jack it's very crudely done i mean you don't have a lot of time and you you you, you get back down and you see the the wiry man he just looks up there at it and he just kind of shakes his head i don't know it looks nice i just walk in <laughs> <laughs> you, you walk on past the, you walk on yep. past Cork, and you make your way in, and you, as you enter, you you find that it's there's a few tables set up, um, there's a few patrons around here or there. You see a lot of servers are are working this area. So a lot of there's a, there's a fair amount of servers for the size of this establishment. You can see one is back behind the bar, but there's several others that are out waiting around tables. And um, when you get in, the the wiry man kind of closes the door there behind you. And, uh, you see these 
two two ladies make their way over to you and begin to to help help you off with your with your coats and your your jerkins. Hello, my name is Jillian, and this is Velma. Let us take these these wet attires off of you. And they start trying to help get all your wet clothes off. They're hanging them. They're hanging them by these these hooks that are that are there. There's several other cloaks and and stuff there as well. And you see one of them is kind of rubbing on your shoulder a bit. Bingo. She's like, oh, you you were not prepared for this sort of storm. I look at Vladimir. Oh, it's one of those establishments. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> they they make you they make you they take you over to a table that's that's near where the hearth is. They come over here, please sit. Dry off here. Yeah. I definitely need to dry out. <laughs> Your friend does not look well. Are you ill? Is she talking to me? Yeah, she's looking at you. Well, I mean, who yeah, is? I'm fine. I'm fine. I just stare at her. You look rather pale. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, welcome to One-Eyed Jacobs. We are the finest establishment here in Minuet. And Velma kind of chickles with because we have like, the only the establishment. Only establishment in the <laughs> well, Of course, but we do have a fantastic variety of ales and schnapps. Don't forget the schnapps. And you hear somebody over the corner yell, "Schnapps! Schnapps! Schnapps!" <laughs> and the bartender says, "Yes, another round of schnapps." They start bringing out these tiny glasses of spirits and setting them all across the tables, and they they come out with these these large neck long necked like vases almost of stuff, and they're they're slowly pouring them into each one of the of the little miniature glasses. You see, everybody starts chanting, "Schnapp, schnapp, schnapp, schnapp." Hey, I'm totally down with this because I definitely need some warm liquor inside me after all this. <laughs> I'm going to start chanting along with him. Yeah. All right. So you start <laughs> chanting right along with them, and pretty soon they come over your way and they, they pour. They say the first round is customary here at One Eye Jacobs that um, for each new traveler that we, we do a round of schnapps, and it's this is complimentary. Huh. This I'm, is even my, this is my favorite type of schnapps. <laughs> uh, I would hate to be rude. Yeah, <laughs> as would I. All right, so they they get you they get you your first shot, and everybody does a does a they they kind of pick up the pace of their chanting until they hit kind of this kind of feverish pitch, and they all yell schnapps, and they raise their glasses, and everybody shoots them down real quick, and then they slam the slam the little glass on the table, and they all kind of cheer, woo schnapps. I can dig this place. Yeah. <laughs> and Freddie, Freddie's definitely like, oh yes, give me a, give me one. One of those. Don't you all screw this up for me? <laughs> yeah, you do not screw this up for me. <laughs> I have found a slice of heaven in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> do not screw. Do not screw this up. <laughs> all right. So you see that um, you see that they make their way over there, and they're they kind of disappear from. They're like, "We'll be right back if you wish to order anything else. We'll give you a moment to let that settle." And they. They wander off over there, back to the bar, and you see they're kind of talking amongst themselves, looking over your direction, and kind of pointing. And you see this 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 man comes walking out from from behind a set of curtains, and he he's he's really no more more clad than the others. You can you can tell the lighting in here is is not not the greatest. It's kind of it's got kind of a a dim sort of sort of lighting, and there's an obvious waft of kind of incense that burns kind of throughout the place. Um, you don't maybe notice it quite at first because they took you over next to the fireplace to warm up and you're, you're catching a fair amount of, of aromas from the, from the wood itself as it burns. But um, after being there for a moment, and as you get yourself kind of settled, you can, you can see sort of the, sort of the hazy, the hazy smoke of, of incense that's kind of slowly, slowly, filling up you know from the from the tops of the rafters kind of down a bit as this place has been been at it now for for several hours prior to your arrival and pretty soon pretty soon uh, Jillian makes her way back over says uh, would you like to would you like another round 
or would you prefer something lighter and frothier? Ooh, a good ale sounds good on top of that. I'll second that. All right. Fre- Freddie's the mountain amongst man, so that's a uh, few beers is nothing to him. Yes, he'll have another. Cork's he'll just going to have water. <laughs> so... Sent you a DM snacks. So they walk over there to get your they walk over to get your next round of drinks and as as Jillian is walking back over, she passes by the wiry man who's standing there at the door. And as she walks by, you see he reaches over and just grabs a whole handful of her butt. And she kind of jumps a bit and and at this point, we need initiatives. Okay. Since we normally should be rolling initiative to start off with anyway. Let's see here. Want to roll 2d10 here? Yes. You get 2d10 plus your initiative modifier. We're at initiative sex. Okay. Oh, I need an initiative tracker. Where'd my initiative tracker? Oh, there it is. It's like, did I lose it? I thought it was there somewhere. We gotta add Vlad here. Oh, there That is an 11 for Vladimir. Or am I, am I in... Am I not the only person? I think everybody oh, else. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, 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 Bingo what? has a trait that lets him roll 2d10. It's 1d10 plus initiative for the rest of you. I was just confirming Bingo that he's correct. He gets 2d10. <laughs> oh, now much better roll, though, after you got to re-roll it, didn't you? Oh, for this uh, for this, we do 1d10. We don't use our sheet. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. There's no active button on the sheet for initiative. You have to just roll a d10 and add oh. your initiative mod to it. Okay, and our initiative mod is oh well. On which page? Towns trappings, and it'll be the second number there on that top list. The second number in the top list. So you have all those boxes at the top. Yep, there should be one that says initiative. Tells you what the the number is to add to it. I see fake points, reputation points. Oh, here we is it further. Yeah, below your difficulty rating chart. Oh, okay. Is it the um, uh, the three plus AB? That's movement, though, right? No, uh, PB. A oh, three plus PB. Okay, I have a three plus BB that says eight. Is that correct? That would be correct. That'd be right. Okay, so mine would be seventeen then. Seventeen then for, for hey, you're already a seventeen. You must roll that last time you're on initiative. So we ah. will resort this to descending. And Bingo, you are the first to hop up out of your seat. Why am I happy on my seat? Well, I don't know. You saw you saw what went down. So I saw a guy reach over and grab the servers. Yep, he grabs one. But, so at this point it is it is initiative. So are you gonna do anything? Nope. Alrighty. As, I mean, what is, what, what is her response? I mean, well, that's the, that's, I mean, she looked like she jumped, but that yep. was... And then she turns around, and with a closed fist in a form that you would not expect from somebody with her job, just lays this guy out completely. And he <laughs> spirals around, unexpectedly, spirals around, and just spit flying out of his mouth, leans up against the wall, and just collapses onto the floor. And you see, she turns around, looking uh-huh. what you think at first is your direction. She says, it worked. It really worked, Marie. It worked. And you realize she's not looking at you. She's looking up at the top of the banister. You look up and you uh-huh. see a tall, pale-skinned woman with long, dark hair. She has boots that come up past her knees. And she's not dressed exactly like the rest of them. She has kind of a 
kind of a, a bustier on, but nothing nearly as as scantily clad as as the rest of the girls. And she's slowly walking her way down the steps from the from the top floor down to the bottom floor. And you see, um, she walks so over. So very mask to me. You, you you get maybe that sort of vibe, and you see that she walks over there and she she takes Julian by the hand and and she you know grabs it and she says, oh. She goes. That was excellent form, excellent. And I, uh, I might end this shit if I do that. <laughs> yep. So, you go ahead and and everyone kind of stops what they're doing. They all see this happen and they all back, go right back to their drinks and everything goes back to to the way it was just a few moments before. Mm-hmm. The. They, she comes back over there and she apologizes. I'm sorry for this. Um, here's your drinks, and she starts setting them down on your table. She's like, "No, no, the show was wonderful. Good shot." We're, we're sorry about him. He's not actually employed here. Oh, really? Yes. I just assumed he was your doorman. Um, no, um, the madam. She she has to. Um, she pays the canard tax. And for her canard tax, um, security for all the local establishments in Minuet are thus supplied by Monsieur Canard. It seems like a canard. <laughs> so anyway, come. Um, oh, by the way, this is this is my friend Marie. Marie, these are travelers who've just come. There's an extra seat here. You should sit with them, and I'll grab you a schnapps. And she, jaunters off, and this. Tall lady comes and sits down at your table. Evening, Marie. Good evening. I see you all look like weary travelers. Where have you come from? Uh, just up the river. Um, we were in an altercation. Apparently, there's um. I lean in like real, like quiet. I want to say bandits, but they were more. Burned a village out there, and we decided that uh, we'd had enough of that, and we uh, are now traveling down river for fire to pastures. Mm-hmm. I see. Well, that is um, that's terrible news. I hate it when bandits plague trade routes. There's been rumor that there are perhaps bandits along this trade route as well. Oh, goodness. I am that weary man these days. Bandits are a little uh, above my pay grade. <laughs> You come in on tonight's boat, then, I assume? Yes. It was the fastest way to get some travel down the river. Was this your, um, was this your entire crew? Uh, except for the captain. Is the captain somewhere in the establishment? Uh, you look over, you see he's sitting down at like the end of the bar bar area. Yeah. So, except for our captain, I point over towards the captain. Oh, yes. Yes, he's a familiar face in these parts. It's happened to work out for us. His, his crew abandoned him. Uh, so we helped him to deliver. Would like, while you're sitting here speaking with her, you can make a challenging awareness test. I would love to. One challenge. Awareness. Oh, Vladimir does not notice with a critical fail. And I do not either. Looks like Freddy is the first to notice. Cork, are you going to roll? Yeah, it's a investigation, right? Awareness. Awareness. A challenging awareness. Yep, you didn't notice. So, Freddy is the only one who notices, and as 
as everyone's sitting here having a conversation with this tall, pale-skinned woman, you see at a, another table, back off over near the corner, there's a man sitting there, and he's looks like he's sketching something in a book. And he's totally focused on his work. He's been there the whole time. You hadn't really paid any attention. But at one point, he kind of looks up from his book, and he kind of peers in your guys' direction a bit. And after kind of staring for a moment, he quickly shuffles his book and a couple of their belongings into a bag. And he slips up over there and, and up the railing and, and upstairs, kind of giving nod to, to the barkeep as he, as he walks by and makes his way up to, to one of the rooms upstairs. It doesn't seem as though the woman you're talking to has, has made any has taken any notice of it. it. Hmm. So, uh, how much is uh, room here for the night? Oh, um, we would have to talk to, um, to Madame uh, Dominica whenever she's made available. I don't, um, I don't run this establishment. I've only been here a couple of weeks myself. Uh, I just, uh, figured if you knew what the going rate was. Pretty soon, uh, pretty soon Vivian makes her way back with the, with the, and Julian come back with the schnapps and they set it down and, and she's, oh, thank you, my dears. And she, she takes a drink and smashes it down on the, on the table and they, they wander off. She goes, oh, I tell you, I have taken a liking to the stuff. I see why it is such a big deal here. <laughs> is that guy still down? Like the canard guy? Yeah, yeah. He's still out cold. Can I tie his shoes up? Like, his shoelaces. Yeah, yeah, you, you tie his boots together. If that was to be your thing, you can you can totally tie his boots. He's out cold. Ain't nobody helping him. Yeah. Where is our force of chaos? Yeah, ain't nobody, ain't nobody, uh, ain't nobody doing anything, anything, you know, at all there. And can I, like, pickpocket him? What? Can I pickpocket him? Yeah. Yeah, you can pickpocket him. Do I need to make any uh, checks for that or no? Uh, if you would like to uh, make a skullduggery check to see if you can find where he keeps his stuff stashed on him. And the rating for that? It'll be relatively easy because he's out cold. So the only thing you have to worry about is whether or not everyone else sees you clearly looting looting the, uh, the bouncer's body. Uh, you, you're trying to casually kind of search him without any, without drawing any attention to yourself. And, um, you don't, you don't find any coin on him. Yeah. So that when Freddy sees this, uh, man who goes upstairs, does he see anything just out of ordinary, any, anything odd about his, that man's behavior or his features? He's, a. Uh... He's got a, he was a young, he's a rather young looking man. He's normally dressed, um, had kind of a, kind of a slicker on himself, like a coat that he didn't necessarily take off when he came in. He was, he, he kept it on. It looks like it was kind of tied up in the front and he, uh, kind of blondish color hair. I, I wouldn't say like chiseled features, but he was clean shaven had kind of a, a bright glaring sort of blue eyes to him. Very, very kind of striking eyes as he only makes kind of contact with you for just a moment. doesn't take you long speaking as you continue to sit and kind of chat it up with this lady to to realize that she is what they refer to as an Ardanian. Ardanians come from the north so if you want to 
make like a like an equivalency. It would be like she's kind of Scandinavian. It kind of has a kind of a Finland sort of look to her. Kind of that kind of a. She's not like a large large woman, but maybe a little taller than average for for what you expect women to be, and um, maybe a little broader across the shoulder. But um, yet at the same time has. She, she clearly does not look as though she's from around here. She is definitely not native to this area. You're from around here, are you? <laughs> it just so, it, so, it makes her stand out a bit. Yeah, so Freddy's kind of intrigued uh, because, you know, he's a large man. He likes big women. Uh, so would, can we do a folklore check with Freddy? A folklore? You gonna make a folklore check for what about her? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Would that be a standard routine? Um, routine. Okay. Let's see. A critical fail. Mm-hmm. You. I was the latest tonight. You uh, you can't you can't place anything. You can't quite place anything else. She's about. clearly from France. Yeah. Um, any, anything else about her? Just you. It's almost there at the tip of your tongue, but you just can't quite come up with with anything else about people from that region, or what what else you might expect from them. It's about that time as your your busy eyeing are over that you notice the hilt of something sticking out of out of uh, the side of her boot where she has it strapped to her to her thigh again as her boots come up past her knee you can see that something is concealed down inside the inside her boot but you can't quite make out what it is So how long will you all be staying in Minuet? Mm. Probably more. Uh, uh, what date is it? It is the uh, is now the twelfth. Uh, we ca- we haven't ca- really determined that. Good. Did the captain pay us when we arrived? Yes, he gave you all your four okay. bra- your five brass pennies okay. that you okay. that you wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, we hadn't really discussed that, so I'm gonna uh, just kind of go with uh, as uh, to be determined. We'll see how uh, how work pans out. Uh, well, you'll find um, the food and drink here is is more than reasonably priced. Because, of course, um, Madame uh, Domesca would prefer that you um, partake of the other services this place offers. Of course. So, by all means, if you have, um, if you have pennies on you, they'll, they'll continue to They'll continue to uh, to serve you for as long as needed, but um, if, if you do have a, we take my recommendation. The soup here is amazing. It's quite good. Hot food sounds so perfect right now. It should help warm you up after the long wet travel. I'm kind of chilled to the bone. The fire feels good. The schnapps. Really warms about here, but the bones I really need to warm up the bones. <laughs> about this time, Vivian shows back up with another round of drinks. Oh, um, one of the patrons up at the bar said to buy you all another round. So here it is, and they start dropping off another round of drinks. Can I get that? It was recommended that the soup here is fantastic. Oh. Could I like a bowl of soup as well? I would love a bowl of soup. Yes, please. That'll that'll only be three brass pennies. Three brass pennies on the table. All right. 
That's a bit steep. It's a fifth of my wealth, but okay. <laughs> Yeah. You guys should have had some starting coin before you just got paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like six. Yeah, that's right. You were poor. I forgot. <laughs> so yeah, so we're, we're he, all broke. <laughs> yeah, it, she wanders up back up to the back up to the thing and and she puts your orders in and drops the pennies off there and and then yeah, you guys sit, continue to sit around the hearth. It's finally you're finally starting to dry off. You're finally starting to warm up. You got another round of drinks in you. After the schnapps, this is your third round of drinks. Everybody, if you continue to drink these, you're gonna have to make yourself a toughness check at routine, or else become intoxicated. I, I do my not... best, Nikki. I don't consider myself a fantastic uh, role player when it comes time to, to play female NPCs. But <laughs> I, I'm doing what I can here. I have a few male voices I can do. I have even fewer female voices, so I'm... <laughs> yeah, oh, you'll man. find that the, oh, the women mind. sound... That's not your toughness pretty... check. I looked over and I saw that critical fail from your folklore snacks. I thought that was your <laughs> critical fail again. I'm like, man, oh, no. that's her. you're killing but, me. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Freddie's feeling just a little... He's feeling a little fatigued after all of the uh, hard, uh, you know... Do, using the pole and pushing off the rocks and throwing bodies over the off of the barge, so he's going to abstain from drinking anymore. You, you know, he he could handle it, but he, he'd rather uh, find a warm bed than anything else at the moment. All right, so you get a uh, you get up there, and uh, they did you guys make your or did you all stop drinking? Uh, we're uh, on the third one, or are we making the roll on the third one? Uh, on the third one, you're making the roll. Oh, okay. I'll make the roll then. Yeah. Since someone else bought me a drink and all, who am I to turn that down? You said routine, right? Yep. Okay. I'm not trusting this. You're not trusting it? You're not going to drink? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. I'm a pro drinker. Ooh. You're doing just fine. Bingo. I drink like a king. You're drinking yours down. It looks like uh looks like Vladimir is not handling his his as well, which is strange considering he's an ogre. <laughs> he's giant. He has literally <laughs> ten times the mass of me. <laughs> now, this is this is this is a double edged sword for Vladimir. Vladimir, you're officially intoxicated. Yes. You gain a corruption. You can know officially so Mark yourself one Vince, on the corruption. Anybody have anything? <laughs> Your corruption bubble put a one in there. Right um, oh, one corruption. You you do have now the option because you have the special trait corrosing. Would you like to become an angry drunk or a happy drunk? Given what it's had so far, let's let's be ha happy drunk. All right, you are a happy drunk, so. Should you make any social challenges, just be aware that you get your you get your bonuses, your plus ten to charm and something else, I think, or whatever. Whatever the uh, trait gives you again, you can uh, hit the button on your sheet; it'll put it in chat if you wanna if you wanna remember what it does. So as the night carries on, you guys get another round. There it is. Yes. Uh, yeah. You get a ten. You get a ten to charm now that you're intoxicated. So you. And intimidate, yeah. Yeah. But no, yeah. intimidates if he's an angry drunk. Uh, if he picks angry, then he's a gets plus ten to intimidate. Hulk's so, not mad yet. Yeah. So you guys continue to you guys continue to sit and drink, and Marie just continues to kind of talk to you about where you'd come from and if you who you did employment with and you know, did you deal with any of the refugees from the war and she just keeps going on and on about these things that are completely not the sort of thing you would have expected from someone who's 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 working in a brothel. Um, also, going to uh, just uh, redirect some of the questions back, like kind of tell you if I can find out where she's from. She doesn't look like you know a local, things like that. And she said she's new here, and just started. So yeah, she's tells you this tale about oh my I came through passing my way heading heading down river towards the capital and 
Um, as you know, this is a, a well-guarded path. There's, there's reeves at nearly every juncture. They patrol up and down all the time, and so I felt this would be a, a safe passageway to get, get to where I needed to be up at the near the capital. Um, I grew up in the Holy City, but spent, um, spent a fair amount of my time, uh, you know, moving from monastery to monastery, but I finally got out and I've made my way headed towards the capital to do some work there, and my boat unfortunately has damages and needs repaired, so I've been stuck here for a couple of weeks while they, they try to get more, while they get more stuff in to do repairs, and a shipwright has to come, I guess, all the way from like Swansea, and I suppose based on what little you told me that it might take a while. Swansea is still there. Well, yes, but with all those, with all the bandits that you mentioned along the roads, it might take the shipwright some time to get here. Yes. Bandits. It's unfortunate. Yes. I always heard that Vorgberg was, was a very, was a very fine place. Yes, it was a nice town, though, uh, it was, uh, had a lot of, uh, immigrants from the war. Oh, the refugees, yes. Yes. I did a very mixed relationship there. Kind of felt for them. Well, my friends, um, I hate to be rude and have to cut um, my time short with you, but the hour draws late. Again, welcome to One Eye Jacobs. If you need anything, Vivian and uh, Julian will, Jillian will be by to take care of all of your needs. In the meantime, I'm going to make my way back towards my room. Get some rest. Fair enough. She stands up and drops a couple of silver shillings on the on the table and looks at Jillian and says, Another round for this group. And she makes her way back up to the to the thing and you see as she walks back up there, they all start chanting, Schnapps, 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 Schnapps. <laughs> it starts back up on a fever pitch. You see, they bring out the little glasses again, and they set them back down, and they start pouring. <laughs> this is gonna be that fuzzy cut scene where we see a uh, Vladimir with two bottles of club shot. All right, so they, they bring out another round of schnapps, and it would be incredibly rude. Not to take your shot, so <laughs> yeah. So Vladimir, now we're at a standard toughness check. We went from <laughs> went from a uh, routine to standard as as the drinks continue to come in. Oh, a critical fail! Oh, that's that was me. Two critical fails. Oh snap! Oh man, we're drunk buddies. <laughs> you got bottom, but I'm going top. <laughs> oh great, crunch! Squish me like a bug. <laughs> Fourteen physical peril. Oh, this oh. one, it burns oh, all the way down, and when it hits on top of those lighter L's you had the previous two rounds, liquor after beer. You're you're not in the clear. You are you're 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 mixing you're mixing streams at this point and pretty soon you see poor Vladimir leans over right into the right into the uh right into the hearth, into the fire itself and just just up chucks oh, no. a stream. An ogreish stream of rot gut and, and 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 schnapps comes back up and you hear one guy over there at the other side yells Puke and rally <laughs> my man but you are not sure you can stomach any more at this point Vladimir the soup just came they finally deliver the soup over there to the table and, and Vivi leans down there and she she takes a, a rag and kind of wipes her face off and she says here you, sh you should really try to have something in your stomach by the looks of things you, you haven't eaten all day and yeah I agree that I've kicked my alcohol off at this point. I'm pretty gone. And I'm just going to focus on food. <laughs> you get your soup. It's really, really good. Um, you don't know exactly what's in it. You can tell there's some vegetables, some other stuff sort of cut up. Um, some sort of meat. Um, it 
smells fantastic. And she's right, it's actually quite good. I enjoy the glory warmth of this soup and it filling my belly and uh, taking advantage of the nice drunk that I've got going. And now I need to find a room to sleep this off. <laughs> you make your way up there to the barkeep who has all the various keys dangling up there, up there behind her. And she walks up there and says, well, what will it be? I am looking for a room for the night. Ah, room. Um, how many rooms will you be needing? I see there are four of you. Um, how many beds per room? Well, many of them, um, of course, are, are singles only have one bed per room. Um, do not want to be so forward as to ask if you need four beds, but if you need four beds, there are four rooms available. The uh, rooms go for one silver shilling each and three brass pennies. All right. The three brass pennies is, of course, the Kanad tax. See, and uh, I, I smirk and I'm like, "What about Marie's room?" <laughs> <laughs> about your what? <laughs> Marie's room. <laughs> hey, hey guys, like I totally not that half joke. That. What was that? I cannot afford that. <laughs> Ha ha ha. Har har. You're so funny. Well, you can't well, afford it. Really? No. Canard. He can't canard afford it. Canard. Canard afford it. Got it. Canard afford it. Seems like there's a canard. Maybe perhaps some. Maybe perhaps you all shouldn't have separate rooms. Um, no, uh, that would be fine. If we could uh, double up, that would be great. Okay, then that would be two silver shillings and and six brass pennies for the Kanad tax. All right. And, uh, sleep on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Do you go back uh, down to the I boat? I don't think that's each. That's total. <laughs> that's total. Right, it's 240 brass pennies for one shilling, and I have 13 pennies. Yeah. Right. Uh, how they got... For how much? How many it's... brass pennies is it for a shilling? 120. Oh. It's one, it's yeah, we only have... Because it's 240 have... brass pennies for a gold crown. Y yeah. You're, yeah. Yeah, if you, if you look, it's... Yeah, it's, it's not okay. that many. Okay, never mind. You're, you're misreading the... Uh... The conversion chart on the uh yep i see that now under talents and trappings yeah yeah one gold crown is 20 silver shillings or 240 it's 12 it's 12 brass pennies per silver shilling so every 12 brass is one silver okay that's right yep amen and i went two and we also have uh the silver shillings that we got paid for from the uh the security duty that's right you guys got paid security duty by Maximilian. Um, was... Georgie may not have had that recorded on his sheet because of his right. departure from that game. So if you did, you did have a you did have a couple silver shillings on you from. Yes. You like your room. I, I yeah. realize. I'm you glad you remember that. Down. I was gonna say you all should be able to afford this. This isn't that bad because. Yeah. Got it. It was like wait, we can't. Afford can't afford the soup, can't afford a bed, can't afford the <laughs> You think people are generous buying us drinks around here? Did Cork get any since, or after well, she died, or no? What? Did Cork get any silver shillings? You, you got them you were paid, you guys were paid for the trip from, from uh, yeah. Swansea to Vorberg. So yeah, you guys were paid yep. for that. And then no, the nobody would have taken the time to loot you because they were not there to to loot when you were killed so you, you, whatever you had on you would have stayed on you they didn't all right and i think that leads me to one silver shilling then throwing a, i'll throw one shilling in one silver shilling in all right so the rest of your night 
you can eat your soup. It kind of settles you a little bit. Um, at this point, your, your, your stomach's turning. You're feeling it is definitely time for bed. You guys get your rooms. You go up there and you call it a night. This will restore. Um, well, we have to make a bit of a check first. Um, I would like everybody to make a standard resolve roll. Well, it's under willpower. Well, I do have it trained at least. <laughs> Vlad made it. Freddy did not. You said routine resolve, right? A uh, standard. Oh. Standard resolve. Yes, Freddy rolled at ninety-six. Freddy did not sleep well. Okay. Must room with me. Those of you who failed the resolve check have a really hard time getting to sleep because of all the various noises that you hear going on throughout the, the top of the rooms as you're, as you're up there for the night. The, you're next to, to noisy neighbors that are partaking of the, of the services here at the brothel, and there's loud thuds against the wall that keep you awake. You guys that failed your check will only restore yourselves to imperiled. You will not restore, if you have any peril, all the way back to unhindered. Uh, when you guys wake up in the morning, you will start at imperiled, those of you who failed. As you are tired. I, on the other hand, have used to a life living in a barracks. And uh, you cannot make enough noise <laughs> to bother me. And, and we're shit-faced, so there's that. Yeah. <laughs> the two drunks yeah, who so apparently slept through all the noise. <laughs> yeah, uh, Freddy. Freddy is just ha just just couldn't handle it because, you know, uh, Vlad just reeks and he kept farting all night, and it was just those loud are, and those not are ogre <laughs> farts. The ogre farts. <laughs> the ogre farts. I'm just like steamers, steamers. Especially bad. <laughs> ask ask my off stream uh, Zweihander group how bad the farts can get in Zweihander. Yeah. One character died from one last game session, so it happened. <laughs> it happened. It's true. You can read about it on the Discord. It's in there. I promise you. <laughs> so, um, Vlad, you were the first one out. Your head hits the pillow, and you don't even take the time to notice how kind of raggedy the beds are, and you, just, you don't even worry about it. You just boom, big, big ogre head hits the pillow, and you are out cold. I've been there. In the middle of the night, you're pretty sure you hear your door creak open. It kind of I have a light sleeper? Not you. This is Vlad. Oh, okay. This is Vlad. So he, Vlad... He, he uh, does not have light sleeper. Right. Right? Pamphleteer doesn't have light sleeper, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh -uh. Nope. <laughs> so so you, it's, it's Vlad and Freddy. Got it. You turn around and groggy-eyed, still feeling the effects. The world's kind of still spinning. And you look and your door is still shut. And it's still rather dark in your room, but the, 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 the light from that full moon still kind of coming through your window. And you can make out sort of a shadowy figure in the corner. And it seems to be taller than you. Strangely enough, this thing, it's taller than you. And you can see it. It's long, lanky arms. And it's still kind of hidden in shadow. You can't really fully make it out. You see it reaches down and that it's, it has this long, kind of pale blue colored skin arm that kind of stretches along the floor, running along the floor and up over towards the head of your bed. And when you turn and you look, you see that it's gently caressing your shadow with a long lobster-like spindly clawed hand and it's just stroking what would be the hair of your shadow and you realize it's not touching you but you can feel it on your head as it strokes the shadow on the wall
and you hear it you hear it say to you sleep and whoom, you pass back out I, I'm not mad it's totally normal <laughs> I'm not mad <laughs> I dig chicks with lobster claws. <laughs> you awaken in the morning to find you made a mess of yourself. Do I do I remember this um, lobster chick? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you remember your dream. Well, this hasn't happened for a while. You, you spend a little time. You get up, have to clean clean yourself up real good. And, and we're sharing, so um, I want to ask if um, whoever I'm with knows anything weird last night. Who was in your room with you? Freddy. Freddy? So were you and Freddy, the two in the same room, did we determine? Yeah. Yes. Freddy didn't sleep well at all. Freddy was up several times. But never, Freddy, did you see any of this? Vlad, Vlad, you, what was... You were making so much noise last night. Were you talking? I heard you talk. Sound like you were talking in your sleep. No, nah, it's, it's mumbling. It's like it was, it's weird. It felt like it was touching me, but it, it wasn't. I don't. I can't explain it. Are you sure that wasn't a nightmare? I didn't hear anything. I mean, I did, but I didn't hear anyone else. I th- I just heard you. Anything's possible, but I, it felt real. I think it was a schnapps. You know, might have been something a little hallucinogenic in there. You know, a little uh, green fairy, perhaps? You, was there some green fairy there? Maybe. Maybe that, that must be it. A bit of wormwood in that schnapps. <laughs> like somebody flipped them some absinthe instead of some uh, schnapps. So after, uh, so after taking a little time to get yourself all cleaned up, and you have a little wash basins there to kind of clean up with and to get ready you get all your stuff reassembled and you come out of your rooms and you find that everything at, at one eye jacobs is is mostly kind of how you left it the faces have changed there's different people in there there's different people working um you you don't necessarily notice the same people around but you do notice that things are still operating it's slower um, there's a few people down there still eating soup um not 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 much has really changed all that much you do not see the ardanian woman anywhere you don't you don't notice like i said even your your boat captain is not there at the moment it is the morning of the 13th Ready to get breakfast lots of bread Something greasy. So, Something with bacon or sausage. You go on top of the Yep. There's a man working there and he spins around. What do we be having this morning? Breakfast. Breakfast. What do you got? Well, many here prefer the soup. If you haven't had it, it's fantastic. Have that for dinner. Oh, in that case, perhaps you would um, you would find the biscuits to be more to your liking. Yes, biscuits, biscuits sound good. Yes, biscuits. Oh, that would actually be... got some gravy on that. Oh, it uh, for two brass pennies you can get to the biscuits, and for an additional brass penny you can get the gravy, and then of course we have to apply next to brass penny for the canard tax. Perfect. Tax is pretty brutal. <laughs> and Mr. Kennard is, um, well, he's a very stern man, but. 
And I pay my four brass pennies for biscuits. Breakfast. All right. So you pay your brass pennies and they give you another seat there at the table. You get down there and and water, please. (laughs) (laughs) You get down there and uh, they they bring you a a thing of water and they bring you, eventually they bring you your plates of biscuits and gravy and you get to sit and eat. It doesn't help restore any of your peril, anything of that sort at this point, but you do get your bellies full and and you're you're on and ready for for a for a new day. Where would you like to go to inside Minuet first? You're you're at One Eye Jacobs, which is the largest building, but there's still several other places around town you can you can go and check out. You can you see down there near the river again is the Toll House. Um, you do remember that you guys were told to check in there with the with the keeper. For the uh, for the toll. Look at us. That's the captain's problem. <laughs> we took care of the last problem. He's got this one. Yep. <laughs> you did. You did. Spot his, his, boat, his toll. There is a general store over across the street, and uh, when you were walking up, you did see uh, what looked like an apothecary's stand well a little small apothecary shop down the way um and there was further further up the road you can see um there was a another establishment it looks more like a hole in the wall had us had a uh, look like a flask for its sign it was kind of swinging in the winds last night but it didn't look very very open or welcoming you're not you're not sure if the place was was actually open at all. I'm gonna rally the troops, get everybody together. So this town's a little expensive. We really gonna need to find some work. Otherwise, uh, we're gonna run out of money real quick. And did we want to uh, dip out of this town? Or, uh, and I point at, uh, Clark, uh, and you have that note. Is that something we want to deal with? Because that's a long wait, and it's a really expensive town. Is it today the 13th? I thought it was the 19th that the, the 13th. thing said. Today. If it's today, then awesome. She hasn't actually, I don't know, did she even tell you guys about the note? Well, I was literally like, loot him! And we both were basically doing it, so. That's right, so you would have have seen it too then. Yeah. No, it it says that the Witchstone's to arrive in Minuet on the 14th. Tomorrow. Uh, 13th, sorry, on the 13th. 13th, okay, today! Sorry, I meant... I said that, and then I don't know why I said it wrong, because that's clearly the only way it can work. So, yeah, it's the 13th. Not today, then! Aboard the Twin Towers. I can't afford tomorrow. <laughs> Expecting Witchstone to arrive in Minuet on the 13th. Aboard the Twin Trout, UG. Were the initials. UG were the initials. Okay. One of the workers comes over and says, I'm, I couldn't help but overhear that you are looking perhaps for employment. Yes. Do you have some uh, labor work or anything that needs to get done around here for uh, a decent amount of pay? Well, there's only a few people in this town who can afford employees. The most notable of which is Monsieur Kennard. Why am I not shocked? It's um it's also possible that you could check with the with the toll keeper. Um his name is uh, Herman Truman. You'll find him down there at the toll. He sometimes needs um extra help since his accident. Accident? Yes. Yes. I literally just 
turn on my feet and start walking down towards that, that direction. You're going to head towards the toll house. I, I you, though. Okay, <laughs> so are, are you all following Bingo or are you, you staying back? Yeah, I'm, I'm following Bingo. Okay, Yeah. so... I mean, I'm interested, so I want to know. Okay, so Vlad, <laughs> you you hang on for a moment. Be an inquisitive pamphleteer type that you are. You, uh, he says, yes. It, the the toll keeper, of course, it's his his job to make sure that all the tolls are collected from boats as they dock here to resupply. Um, he's an official station, you know, they're appointed by the crown. And uh, one day, while while there at the at the docks. Um, a boat came in from the currents too hard, and, um, and and Herman, being the good man that he is, tried to help help stop the boat before it did damage to the docks. And um, in doing so, his leg had gotten pinned, so he he has a, a pretty severe limp now. So he sometimes needs help um, with some of the chores down near near the docks. Since since then, he occasionally is is able to uh, put a few few pennies aside for. For those who would do a few things for him before they depart. Well, that's some story. Uh, thank you for sharing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch up my with my fellows now. Uh, wait up! All right. <laughs> you make your way down to the to the toll house, and you get down there, and you see that the the storm has kind of broken. It's a much much nicer day today than it was. It did storm overnight. But um, it did, as morning came around, It's everything is still wet and damp. And you see many of the other boats down there, they're out trudging water off the boats and they're, you know, sweeping their canvases off and tarps. And your, your captain's down there doing much of the same. He's got those long sticks and he's kind of pushing up on some of the tarps and getting water off the, off of uh, the covers and everything else and looks over at you and he goes, Oh, good. Y'all came back here. You need to need to check in. Um, here. And he gives you guys a couple of silver shillings. He goes, uh, go in there and talk to uh the toll keeper and uh get us paid up. While I keep getting this boat uh undone. Uh the the the, the rocky weather overnight slammed her into the dock. We got some we got some damage on the side. I think we may be here a couple of days waiting for a for a shipwright to get here from Swansea. Uh, I look at the uh, two biggest part uh, members of our party. Uh, they're uh, Vlad and uh, Freddy. And I'm like, see if we'll pay us, uh, keep paying us to help out. Maybe you can help uh, clear the water and stuff like that off the off his ship. All right. So I turn to the captain and say, uh, well, uh, no, if you need some help, we're we're actually looking for some work. So, what do you? What's the pay? Well, if you like to stay on the crew, you'll get your four brass pennies a day. Four, four. Uh, but we uh we negotiated five before. Yes, so, that was for the trip down here, and then your contract was dissolved. Now it's back to the base pay, of four brass pennies a day. You take it or leave. Well, this- well, let's 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 talk let's talk about this uh, just a moment, if you please. Uh, this is a, as you know, the cost of living in this city town is a little higher. So uh, I think you could make that make that a little higher Wait, for us. You, you, you suggesting the workers at One Eye Jacobs didn't shove enough free booze down you? Oh well, we can't live off of booze alone. I mean, look at Vlad; he can't even keep it down. So we need a little something for food and a warm bed. The soup's three. I give you four. That means you got one left in your pocket somewhere. Jesus. But you look over my shoulder. And a silver shilling just to sleep. <laughs> It'll yep. be a nicer night nice. tonight. You should just sleep here on the boat. Save your extra pennies. <laughs> I mean, you can uh, take from any other fine people with one that work here. Oh, wait, there, there isn't any. <laughs> In the meantime, go pay our toll. So when the I'm slipping off with the here, uh, we can get out of this godforsaken town. I, I take the money and I go to the uh, since I wanted to go talk to the toll guy anyway. That's uh, can I go pay the toll? You go over and knock on the thing, and before you get there, you see 
an older looking man with some kind of graying hair comes walking out of the guard shack and he closes it up behind him and he kind of turns he goes oh good just who i was looking for i was just coming out to uh settle up on that toll we talked about last night yeah what's uh what's the toll um i think it's uh three shillings and uh i assume he gave me three uh yeah, three shillings gave me three shillings to pay for the for the toll wait 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 wasn't it two i've got i i was giving two shillings for the toll so uh that's what i was told it was two shillings fine go ahead give me the two shillings <laughs> This crotchety old man does this every time he comes to town. He's a he's, he's a stingy one. Is he paying you at I, all? Barely, barely. Four pennies. Four pennies. It's an atrocity to navigate down. So oh no! You got, for a new why are you, you go, Why are you telling him exactly how much he how much he's paying? Oh, I tell him he nothing? brings down here the same things, and every time they all say the same. They can't afford. The people, the food, they can't afford any of it. It's all that canard tax, I think, that really gets him, though. He goes and he what? drops. You see that he's, he walks over and he's got this box where he puts the, puts the shillings Souls, in right? And you can tell by just looking at it that it's, like, recently repaired. Dude, swipe it. Uh, I, I look at it and go... Having a little bit of criminal activity around here lately? Unfortunately, yes. My well, assistant, Reuben, was, uh... Well, I caught him the other night. Breaking into the, the toll box here. And it's, um... It's unfortunate. I really like the kid. Always thought he was a good kid. He'd been doing a lot of work for me down here around the toll house, but... Uh, I suppose the pressures of living here in Minuet got to him, and he, uh, well, he was caught trying to take the, the toll money, and being as these these coins go to the crown itself, to the capital, well, I'm afraid that's, that's a federal offense. The Unfortunately. Coming. Well, I think you and I have a lot of war stories of our wonderful careers. We could have a lot of wonderful chats about. But I can help you out around here if you need. Well, it'd be much appreciated. I, I'm afraid I can't afford to pay too much. Um, being as uh, I'm not positive I've recovered all the tolls that I'm uh, going to be due to give to the Reeves when they make their way down river later, later today to come pick up Reuben. I understand. I understand. But, uh, you know, as a professional watchman, I've, uh, I've served many a town and uh, done my duty, so I think my, uh, my skills would be worth it to you. Oh, your skills. You've been a watchman, huh? Yes. Well, I can always use another good set of eyes around here. That's about the only thing that hasn't gone in this old... Withered form. I uh, repaired the box. Kind of redid the lock on it. But that won't stop that Mr. Canard from sending another one of his racketeers down here to perhaps gather up the uh, the tolls before the Reeves come to collect later. Well, make sure that box is locked up inside. <laughs> yeah, will do. I've already got it all all cleaned out, minus the two that you just put in, which will begin next week's collections. Come on, come inside. Ah, go inside, and I spend some time wasting this guy's ear about both of us basically being old men in government pseudo-military like jobs that basically been both boring and have amazing weird moments in them <laughs> he tells you a little about himself he says yeah he goes i'm a i'm the oldest of three and i uh like you went off and did some time 
spend enough time up on walls over there in the conflicts in the east before I uh, before I aged out and came back here and took up this post so I could continue to serve my uh, my family back in Vorburg they they didn't get the same opportunities that I did my, my brother Heinrich and my little brother Wilhelm I think they both still reside there Wilhelm I think went on to become a become a monk of some sort I think this how much are you aware of uh, what happened in uh, Vor- uh, Vorburg? Something's happened in Vorburg. Well, I mean, it's history over the last ten years or so. Oh, you mean with the old orcs raid? Yes. I, I heard it was terrible. My my brother Heinrich and Maximilian Steiger and them, they went out there and made a valiant stand and drove off those orcs' hordes. I was uh, rather proud of him for showing such bravery. Well, unfortunately, the orcs came back. And ten years later... Yes, uh, that's actually where we just came from. You were there? Yes, unfortunately. Well, if you made we it out, stood did, valiantly. Did my brothers make it out? I don't think so. Well, this is terrible. The city burned. We had to flee. We we stood battling them, but they were vastly outnumbering us, so we had to leave. You see, he hobbles over and sits down at a table. You see, he just has this look of grief on his face. I mean, both of my brothers who who lived. All I know is that this is what I know. I know it was burning, so. Uh, Freddy, Freddy is, uh, Freddy's just kind of giving a side eye to Bingo because he's, he's, uh, contemplating how much truth, uh, should be revealed in regards that, uh, the orcs never left. Uh, so he's conflicted on whether he's going to say something about, well, um, unfortunately, your brother's resolve was not what you may have thought when it came to addressing the orc situation. And it came back, it came back to haunt him. It was, it was a tragedy when all the women and children had were slaughtered. Oh, but yes. The, his history and his uh, legacy should be upheld. Respect and, you know, for your family should be maintained. I guess, uh, I guess I don't have to worry about planning any trips back home then to visit. I do apologize for being the bearer of horrible, tragic news. Well, if, um, if Vorberg has... If Vorberg's been been sacked recently, then that may disrupt that shipwright from getting here from Swansea. That is my concern as well. You guys may all be stuck here for quite some time. Look, um, for bringing me this news, as tragic as it is, I'll repay you with what gratitude I can and a few coin if you can help clean up around here. Now, this door right here behind it, We'll take you to the cells. Reuben's currently being held there until Sergeant Winter Harder and his men get down here later today. They'll take what do you do? Custody. They'll take him back up river. Oh, that's make the sure, young guy. Make okay. sure he stands trial. Yes, yeah, my assistant Reuben. So um, you can go in there, but I advise that you don't don't speak to him. He isn't I'm deserving district. of such niceties. Understood. Don't let him try to honey tongue you into into anything extra either. There's our laws around here that must be maintained. I completely understand. In the meantime, must maintain the order. If you wouldn't mind, uh, a lot of the debris from ships has been picked up and need it moved off of the docks and piled up down there near the end of the dockway. 
do that, take a take a mop of some rooms and sweep up around here. Uh, I believe all the other ships pay their tolls. There won't be any need for that. All that money has already been collected and is here and here with me at the moment so that it's safe. Until Sergeant Winterholder gets down here later today. Sounds wonderful. We will uh, we will get to work right away. There you go. And, for and uh, I'll give you a, a silver shilling. I'll take it out of my own pay. Good test. Much appreciated. Again, I do apologize for the horrible news. It's understandable. I was saving. I wish there was more we could do. Saving up some coin to make a trip back to Vorberg to see family. It's been so long since I've been back. But again, I guess I can uh, use these coins to go ahead and pay you. So he gives each of you a silver shilling. All right. If nothing else, it'll cover another night at the at One Eye Jacobs if you if you're forced to stay here. I do appreciate the help. And uh, I get to work. And um. Included, uh, since you're such a good set of eyes for me, if uh, it's been a few nights since I've had a good night's rest, if you wouldn't mind maybe tonight coming around and just keeping an eye on the place until until the sergeant gets here. I can definitely help you with that. I haven't gotten any manner of uh, confession out of the young boy, but um, if it's possible that he was put up to this by Mr. Kennard. I do kind of fear for the boy's life. Understood. He's got to go up river. Where he'll be. Well, where the punishment, the capital punishment for, for thieving from the crown, of course, is, is death. But not before they... Not before they uh, try to get information from him first. If you catch my drift, Sergeant Winterhouder is a stern man too. Yes, uh, met him. Oh, you stopped on Lloyd's Beacon on your way down. Yes, it was a uh, thievery there. Some thief was hiding, and they were checking the boats. We had just arrived in town and uh, had started on crew on this uh, boat here to help out, and uh, they were searching the boats. So. Probably one of Kennard's men. He probably sent one up there, thinking he'd receive coin from from them as well. Wouldn't have surprised me if he didn't try to smuggle his way down here also. So I think it can add as more of a um, criminal, more of a gangster. Um, he's a racketeer, yes. Runs a protection racket here in town. I hear all the local shop owners complaining about it. Charges them all a canard tax, and for it he supplies them with his strong-armed men to... Make sure nothing happens to their establishment. And if anything was establishment, it would probably be caused by Mr. No. Well, that's what I've always suspected, but of course... Well... Kennard's got his fingers in everybody's coin purses, so... Most people around Where here are capable he? of doing any protection, protecting here in the town as well. They're already working, working for Working for Mr. Kennard. So, uh, where does Mr. Kennard live? Oh, you can... You find him, uh, downtown there. Uh, past one Eye Jacobs. As soon as I find the name of the place again. So something flask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sigmund's Flask. Yeah, Sigmund's Flask is, uh, where you'll find him. Just, uh, go to the main drag there. It's on the right. Once you get past, uh, one Eye Jacobs. Can't miss it. It's got a big flask, wooden flask hanging from the door. Was that the place that looked like a hole in the wall? Yeah, kind of. Looks like it was closed. Looks like it was kind of closed, but. Okay. 
Thank you for the information. We'll uh, keep our eye open. I know how these uh, bullies like to move into small towns and uh, make it their little fiefdom. <laughs> Things the ground does not appreciate, but unfortunately is forced to tolerate at times. Well, just uh, get your chores done. Then if you got any time, you want to make your way up there, but I'd, I highly advise that you don't go to Sigmund's Flask, because nothing for you there but trouble. Understood. Where does Cork immediately leave to Sigmund's Flask? <laughs> yeah, Cork. that's what it's... Are you going to Red's Sigmund's Flask? Cork mind, it was like, boom! <laughs> yeah. She needs a mustache on the flask. <laughs> she wants a mustache on the flask. You, <laughs> while they're while they're busy working on uh, sweeping and carrying some of the lumber from the from the damaged ships and and everything else over, you you make your way. You kind of sneak off and make your way up towards uh, Sigmund's flask. Are you going alone? Is there anyone else going to sneak off with you? Can I sneak off with him? Wait, I'm confused. No, you are you are sneaking, sneaking off. off. Oh, <laughs> we're just that currently you're means sneaking alone. Off. Unless you're yeah, going to convince someone else to sneak off with you, you're going alone to Sigmund's flask, which is perfectly fine. It is acceptable to do so. I just uh... anyone want to create some chaos with me? <laughs> create some chaos. <laughs> okay, I need a chaos buddy. Says the brain. Need a chaos buddy. I don't think the rest of your party is much for chaos buddying, but if you, I'll let you go. Along. Bingo, are you up for it, bud? Oh, I kind of got two jobs right now. Yeah. Vlad, Frank, or Freddy? I, I mean, we, we have this. We have the stuff to do, so we should probably just do that. Freddy, it's up to you, Cork. Uh, Freddy, Freddy is wanting to uh, kind of uh, stick to earning some more coin because it's kind of pricey around here and maybe get a, a see if I can overhear any interesting dealings. But uh, what are your what are your plans, Cork, when we go there? And oh, and before we say that, Cork, don't try to steal the coinage of the tolls. We want to survive. I reach up and I grab uh, his hand and like make him like like lean down, lean down. <laughs> but it's shiny. I can literally scale you. <laughs> <laughs> but shiny coin. I, I bend my ear to Malice. Or so, bingo, bingo. Sorry. So flat. You might wanna. Go with her just to. I know you're really good at snooping out the info. Maybe you hear some good rumors. I have a feeling there's something we need to know here. I I don't know, but if I guess if you think it'd be the best, it's up to you. You do you. I'm just. Yes. Freddie says, "Yeah, that." says, "Yeah, that that sounds uh, a bit better." I'm 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 gonna sit here and see if I make short work of this as long as someone else. Is staying hanging out to help earn money for the rest of the party. So, awesome. Plus, I yeah. think we're gonna need someone with a sharp tongue to uh, get her out of some trouble. I think. Yeah. Implying okay. that I am going to get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm very sneaky in my whole eight feet. <laughs> Look, I might be dumb, but not that dumb. Right, Who so. died in the last shot? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you two are going to slip off while the other two finish uh, mopping and sweeping off the off the docks and moving some stacks of lumber around to get them cleared. Uh, you guys make your way down the street till you come up to, to Sigma's, Sigmund's Flask, which again, in the daylight, does not look any more welcoming than it did at night. <laughs> um... You see that it's it has windows, but the windows have boards up over them, like 
you could maybe you would have thought they were preparing for a storm or maybe they just don't want people looking in the windows but um nonetheless the windows are, are boarded up the door does have a very similar style kind of a wiry looking five o'clock shadow balding guy standing there at the at the front who kind of just eyes you as you walk up towards the door Oh, hello. How how are you today? Welcome to Sigmund's Flask. Yeah. He walks over there and begins to give you a bit of a pat down. You ain't oh, carrying wait. anything in here. You're not showing, are you? Oh no. Tea poses. No, we we don't want any trouble. We just we just want to be friends. Nothing volatile. No gunpowder. No, just Light just, unzips his pants. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. You guys, uh. Bigger club than you got. <laughs> go in. Uh, just don't cause any trouble. Oh, no, 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 no trouble. I you mean, guys no walk in, and the door shuts behind you, and the, the man sits there on a stool. The little eye slot opens it back up and starts looking out of it. It's dark, it's dingy, and the moment you walk in, you can immediately smell like wet fur. And you can hear the yapping and yipping of, of several dogs. Yip, 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 uh, Gork, you should be just like at home. You hear, yeah. you hear people in the back kind of chanting and there's some cheering going on in the back of the place. Clark starts yipping along with the dogs. You see there's a <laughs> a table with a, one lantern sitting there on it. and You see a man there surrounded by three or four kind of big, bigger guys than the one standing at the door. And there's one there and he's, he isn't quite as big, but he's, he's got a, what looks like a folded out coin purse and he's got stacks of coin and he's sitting there counting them looks like this man right here he isn't paying much mind at all and you see uh, one guy kind of leans over there and taps on him he points over there at him. He kind of looks up. Welcome to Sigmund's Flask. I am Bruno Kennard. Or as you probably have heard of me, Monsieur Kennard is how you will respond to me. Who are you? Well, hi there, uh, Mr. Kennard. Uh, I, I, I'm Vladimir, and uh, this, is, this is my pal Quirk. We're, we're new in town. We hear you was at One-Eyed Jacob's last night. Oh, yes. Fine establishment. You wash up into our town, and then my man Diesel gets spun around. You wouldn't have had nothing to do with it, would you? Oh, no, no. He's, he seemed like a gentleman. I might. <laughs> you did something? You were the one who took out my man Diesel? Maybe. <laughs> And as I just glaringly stare at her, of course. You know, Madame Domeska, she pays good coin for my men to protect her establishment. Now that you've taken my man Diesel out, I'm short-handed. Maybe you could hire me. You came in on that jalopy barge. Yeah. I hear it's out of commission for several days. You're going to be stuck here for quite some time. Yeah. Others tell like me might... you had to double up rooms last night. You clearly cannot afford the establishments there. Unless you wish to be sinking upon your, sleeping upon your sinking barge, perhaps you need to do some work for me. 
And it looks like you might need a quartermaster, so... Win-win, bud. You're a quartermaster. Heck yeah. Well, good. For pennies, you can clean out my kennels. Unless, of course, you prefer to work for silver. Yeah. Tell me, what kind of work is it that you do, quartermaster? The chaos kind. <laughs> you are not the one who abides by the laws. Maybe. <laughs> Are you good with a blade? Yeah, I'm good with a blade. Are you good with a blade? Oh, I'm very good with the blade. How about your friend here? You look like him. You look like a man who worked for silver. You want to take a diesel spot outside the uh, One Eye Jacobs tonight? Make sure there's no trouble. I'll pay you in silver. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can make sure there's no trouble. No, no trouble elsewhere. I'm, I'm just more stammering over myself, you know, just bewildered by this whole encounter. There you go. Smooth like choppy water. <laughs> you see, they all kind of look and kind of laugh and kind of elbowing each other as you as you take on this job. They look back over at Cork. Them some pointy teeth you have. Yeah. I might bite. What is it you think you got? You got some sort of uh, illness? Yeah, herpes. <laughs> Small mistake. You should make your way down there. Sometimes you're my universe. hero. <laughs> Latterman's remedies would have um, Keta, yeah, Katarina Latterman will have exactly what you need to clear that up. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out. But um, I've been needing uh, I need somebody to do me um, a special job. What kind of special job? Well, my man Diesel, he's not the only one that I'm short right now. The, uh, are, you, are you calling me short? No. The goal. The toll keeper. Down at the toll house. He has another one of my men in chains. Young boy. Like you. Came in here looking for work. Said he could work for silver. So I sent him to collect silver from the toll boxes. The fool went and got himself caught. Doorkeeper's gonna turn him over to some Reeves. They'll beat a confession out of him. Then I'll have Reeves from up and down the basque up here, breathing down my throat. I can't have that. So, if you would like to cold contract to work for gold crowns, I will pay handsomely. If you were to take your knife and see that he does not meet with Sergeant Walter Hodler. When the Reeves come, he will not be draw breath, you understand? Mm -hmm. Come sit at the table. All right. Two of the, That's it. Two of the guys at the table get up to pull out the seats. They sit you down. They stand there behind you. One of them like, puts down paper, rolls it out. As the only one who probably can read, <laughs> Vladimir, you, you can quickly read this, this contract that, that he has laid out there. And basically, it's a, a written contract essentially for the contract killing of of Reuben. And he leans over there and he takes his stiletto and he cuts his finger. Puts a drop down there. 
He signs his name, Bruno Canard. He takes it, smears it around the edge of the gold coin, and sets it down on there. Hands the small knife over to, to Cork. You do the I same. Sign I sign it. Fork. Weiner hung. Welcome. Welcome as a member of my establishment. You do this job, you don't get caught. He gives you one gold crown. You come back after the job is done, I will match it with the second one. Again, just, just staring at Cork in disbelief. <laughs> and she's just sitting there with a huge smile on her face, not knowing what she got herself into. Alright. <laughs> and with that, this is where we're going to wrap for tonight. As the party has now <laughs> taken on a contract to both the protect party. and kill Reuben. We'll find out what Ruben's fate is. We'll find out exactly where the Witchstone's going. And maybe a few other things along the way. When we reconvene here in two weeks for the second half of There's Something About Marie. And in the meantime, let's go ahead and say our goodbyes for tonight's game. We'll start with Malice once again. Malice. How you guys doing? I am the Malice Conspiracy on Twitch. I am uh, starting up some uh, new shows. My first uh, brand new show will be launching on Tuesday. If everything you hate about the real world is uh, something you want to talk about, then come to that stream because it's going to be about politics. And we know that everyone hates talking about politics, except that everyone loves ranting about politics. So come have fun and uh yeah maybe you'll learn something see you then i can't believe it's taking you this long to get to a, a politics show on your channel but <laughs> <laughs> georgie you want to sign off hey i'm georgie thanks for coming out we'll uh we'll get you guys next time it'll be fun hopefully i don't die i guess snacks you got any other games going on uh yes um uh, every other saturday which will be this coming saturday you can find me on Homebrew RP, uh, playing the homebrewed campaign, The World of Cairn, at 9 p.m. Central. And then also before that, every other every Wednesday, I'm on all the RPGs, also at 9 p.m. Central. Uh, this week is Star Crawl, so a lot of fun. Uh, and then the other weeks we do um, we do mischief and piracies with two old guy gangs. All right. And, last and that's not, new stuff, but that'll be coming later. And right. last but not least, the nerd, nerd, tell everyone who you are and where we can find you again anymore. You can find me on Instagram at Beauty and the Nerd, but like, you can find me occasionally on some TT2KB streams, like Among Us or whatever. That's right. And whatever is not a proper game, I think that they play here, but there's probably a game called that. <laughs> we'll, we'll find it. We'll be playing it soon. Don't you worry. Um, so again, I am Dustin. I am your GM for pretty much all things Y-Hander here at TT2KB. So, uh, thanks again to my players for showing up and kicking off this, this new adventure. There's something about Marie. Um, it will conclude in two weeks back here again. In the meantime, tomorrow you'll see me and Jeff back here at 10 PM and potentially a couple of members of the community playing a board game called evolution. We're playing on tabletop simulator for our new show that we do every Monday night called All Aboard. It's uh, going to be a board game night me and Jeff run every week. And if you're in our Discord, and I will quickly get that Discord command up here. If you take that link, you join our Discord, you'll be able to find information for how you can get Tabletop Simulator and join in every week when we play a board game or two, depending on how long the games take to play. It'll be me, Jeff, members of the community. And if you join that Discord, that means you, member of the community, can be on here. If you join that community, you may also find yourself someday in a seat like these four players are, playing in a game ran by me because I run community games here. So that's how you get to be here 
on the show. Many of our shows here at TT2KB are ran by the cast of TT2KB, and those obviously people don't have any, we don't have any space to put people in and out of those. But when I run my games, uh, more often than not, I'm picking members from the community to be on here. You can join us again for sacrificial lambs for his evil. (laughs) You can, uh, you can join in here for board game nights on Mondays. And on Thursday, we have another new show we started, which is looking for group where we played among us last week and members of the community are getting a chance to hop in there and play with us as we play those games as well. This week might be Among Us again, or it might be Jackbox. We haven't decided. We'll talk with Jeff and see what we're going to do for this Thursday. Um, Our regular scheduled programming, Tuesdays, 8 p.m. It's now DM to Art. I think it's 8. He might have moved up to 7. But on Tuesdays, Levi and Cameron have switch places. (laughs) The one who was going first is now going second. So I just put out a brand new schedule, and it's already obsolete. I have to redo it. Um, So I think it is 7 p.m. Levi goes first now with DM to Art. And then when he is done, Cameron will take over to do Bardic Knowledge after that. So it's still Talent Tuesday. It's still the same two shows. They're just in opposite order and starting slightly earlier than they used to. So 7 p.m. you'll be able to find DM to Art as he is close to finishing up Sid. I know they're still working on Jeff's character Sid. It's looking good. It's looking good. I think he's he was working on some skin tone stuff and he typically does a lot of that off stream because it's super tedious. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't come to stream and find that Sid is skin tone like it's mostly done. Um, he was doing a lot of it last time. I think he's going to be working on hair. Cameron's been working on a lot of music for Vampire. He was also working on some sound design stuff for Everstorm. So uh, we'll see which one of those Cameron continues to work on this week. Wednesday night, 10 p.m., you don't get the play in it, but you can sure the hell affect it. And that's our Don't Sleep game. All Flesh Must Be Eaten, ran by Levi. Bring your bits. For 100 bits, you could just make a zombie show up and try to kill us. For 1,000 bits, you could make 10 of them show up. We got 18 zombies that just appeared, and we're in combat. So I'm coming with a backup character. I've done a good job of keeping Duke alive at this point, Mm -hmm. but this is probably about the end for my character. So I'm coming with a backup character. You should all come with backup characters, because who knows how many we're going to go through as 18 zombies come barreling at us at the beginning of this game session. And that's before you all start spinning your bits this coming game. So it's not looking good for us here at the home team on, on Don't Sleep, but we'll see what we can do to pull this thing out. Uh, Thursdays again, looking for group. Uh, 10 p.m. Jeff will be here. I'll probably be here. We'll see how that goes with the timing, but we'll probably be playing some Jackbox or all for or Among Us again. Fridays, uh, Clint has taken over Fridays doing his 3D print and chills. He's working on a multi-week project where he is recreating his Dragonborn Paladins mall, and he's making a more life-size replica of it, and it's going to take him several prints. So I would expect that you would see an all-day print and chill Friday, another piece of that ball getting created. Um, Saturday would then be the return of Everstorm, our 5e game. That would be 10 p.m. Central on Saturday. You'll be able to come back and find um, that game will resume this coming Saturday. Again, for Sunday's Y-Hander, we play every other week. Right now, that's opposite weekends of Everstorm. So this week was Y-Hander. Next week will be Everstorm on Saturday. Then the following week for Sunday, it'll be a Y-Hander doubleheader. This game will start at 5. Something about Marie should run until right up about 8. And then when it ends, uh, I'll be cutting off here. We'll wrap this story up, say goodbye to everyone, and then I will be back on immediately with Debbie Snacks and the rest of the cast for Vigilantes of Valandria character creation. So you'll definitely want to stop by and see the characters get created for my homebrew Zweihander campaign. This is not my story. This is a story from a Zweihander book. But I have written three stories for Zweihander. Two of them have already been told. This is the third and final chapter of my trilogy. Georgie there played in the first one, Terror and Tree Fell. Snacks is going to be there in the last one. She's one of my players. So... Come watch make characters. It's a hell of a good time to see character creation done live if you've never seen it. And that is it for announcements. I am going to find us someone to raid. And I'm going to put us over onto the outro screen while I do so. So again, thanks again to my players, for everyone else for being here tonight, for the people who stopped in, raided, donated bits, made fun of my ability to talk like a girl. 
all of it's much appreciated. We love you all. Please come back and, and, some time. And your French accent that sounds like a Russian. <laughs> I, I'm not terribly great at accents. The, the funny thing is, I think he's supposed to be like Jamaican. Oh. So it's it's more of a, oh, okay. it's more of a Jamaican type accent than it is a... In about an hour, I will uh, be I'm playing it. The original Sin 2, if, somebody wants to, if people want to check that out as well. So, so to the outro we go.